application at Atal Bihari Vajpayee University, Bilaspur. Uh, Dr. Hota's research work has been widely recognized with over 103 research papers published in reputed international journals. He has also authored four books that have been published by esteemed publishers such as CRC Press, Elsewhere and Springer. His uh, publications showcase his expertise and deep understanding of subject matter in AI and ML, that is machine learning. He is having four patents also in the field of the same. Uh, moving forward to Dr. Rajni Shailawat. Dr. Rajni Shilawat is an associate professor at the Department of Business Administration, Shadir Devilal University, Sirsa, Haryana. He is a PhD in the management from Institute of Management Studies and Research, Maharishi Dayanan University, Rohtak, with masters in mass communication with excellent work experience in the stream of teaching, of 20 years in presently working in Department of Business Administration, Shadri Devilal University, Sirsa. He has corporate experience of two years with a wide range of other refresher courses and orientation programs. Uh, he has an excellent research supervision experience, a wide range of books and publications in national and international journals, and many more distinguished accomplishments. Moving forward to our co-chair, Professor J.S. Duhan. Uh, Professor J.S. Duhan is a uh, highly experienced uh, in teaching and research, holding a 24-year experience. Uh, he's an additional charge and chair chairperson at Department of Zoology with 115 publications. He has uh, six uh, books, three books in Springer, one book in, uh, in Narusa, and one manual. Uh, his various citation and indexes uh, in, in his research papers. Uh, he has been awarded Young Scientist Award given by the Association of Microbiologists of India in the field of agricultural microbiology uh, and KK Nanda Award for the best research paper presentation. He has attended 42 conferences uh, in which he has attended uh, nine international and 33 national conferences. Uh, he's, a, he's also a lifetime member of the Academic Society of the Indian Science Congress Associations, Association of Microbiologists of India, Society of Con Conservation of Domestic Animals Biodiversity. Moving forward to Professor Deepak Kumar. Professor De Deepak Kumar is a professor at Amity University, Noida, and visiting professor at Faithful State University. Uh, he's awarded PhD from the University of Delhi, India. He's associate editor of the International Journal of System Assurance, Engineering, and Management, Springer. He is a guest editor in many international journals. He has been conferred an award of significant contribution in the field of software reliability engineering by the sixth international conference in quality reliability and infocom technology and industrial management Ashwita, start the call. Maybe you 
Now I would request Professor Daniel Okumbo to please enlighten us with his kind words. Thank you, everyone. Uh, let me start. Uh, let me share my screen. Mm -hmm. Can you see my screen? Yes, yes, sir. All right. I want to, uh, you know, thank uh, Dr. Shana for inviting me uh, to make this presentation. Uh, he was really instrumental in ensuring that I participate in this uh, for in this uh, platform. I, I want to appreciate uh, CDLU for uh, for making this platform available to us. Uh, you know, it looks to me that there's an array of uh, topics that are covered. I want to congratulate them for, for such a, a conference. It looks like somebody's changing my, my slides. Am I, am I the one changing it myself or somebody's changing them? I don't know. Okay. All right. Uh, so the, the title of my presentation, I hope I'll be you know, brief. I hope I won't take too much time uh, to complete this. Uh, I will be looking at uh, linear feedback registers and some of the work that we are doing here at Fairview State University. This is supported by the National Science Foundation of here in the United States. The outline is as you see here, so I'll give some background context. Uh, I will look at various forms of LFS arrows, and in particular, I will, I will show you some of the work uh, that we are we're doing in terms of how to compute a maximum period LFS arrow. So as you already know, uh, preserving data in motion uh, with an address, you know, continue to be a serious challenge uh, in the IT community and in uh, several business organizations. Uh, Excuse me, sir. Uh, I'm really sorry for the interruption. Okay. Uh, um, I would like to know if Dr. Preeti Sharma and Dr. Dongwen has joined or not. Dr. Preeti Sharma. So you may please continue. I'm really sorry for the interruption. Am I, are you okay? Can I continue? Hello, hello, yes. Dr. Kambor. How are you? I, I'm doing okay. You? This is Dr. Hota. Oh, how are you doing? Oh, my fine, God. Fine, good, fine, to, fine. good to hear your voice. <laughs> good, good, good. Thank you for this uh, for this event. You know. All right. So, uh, as you can see, can I continue? Yes, so you can. Okay. So, as you can see from the slides presented here, uh, you know, we are going to encryption and decryption algorithm. We're going to uh, group, you know, we're going to regard them as ciphers. So, from my discussion, when I say cipher, that is what I'm referring to here. So uh, we will be looking at uh, cipher that is symmetric. Uh, so we look at uh, one that only has a, a one secret key. key. Uh, we will not look at uh, we will not look at uh, asymmetric that uses uh, uh, public and private keys. So in particular, we will be focusing on uh, string, uh, string cipher. Uh, so I will be actually we'll be implementing linear feedback sheet registers as our as our cipher. So in in a very you know uh, broad sense, we can uh, the cipher you know uh, is based on uh, three spaces: the key, the plain text, and the cipher spaces. And if we denote that by K, M, and C. 
uh, we can immediately define the encryption and the, uh, the encryption and decryption using the formula that is uh, indicated here. So, so you have the. Uh, let me see. Can I write? Okay. Here we go. So you have the you have the uh, the encryption and then the decryption algorithm. So uh, we expect that that you know the when you encrypt and then the decryption should be able to retrieve back the message, the original message, and that is uh, what we call consistency here. So we expect that the algorithm that you have, the cipher you have, is consistent. Uh, you know, in our work, we're looking at all the string ciphers, uh, which uh, where the key space and the message and the cipher spaces are in the space of zeros and ones. All right. And, you know, typically in the string cipher, uh, we, will, we will use the SO, you know, SO exclusive or to uh, combine the message and the and the key to give you a cipher test. And then the reverse, you know, you, you combine the key and the cipher set, uh, test to get by the message. So we can prove that it is consistent. You can actually prove that here by looking at this expression that I have here. All right, so you get by the original message. All right. So uh, an example of uh, a string cipher of the type that we are looking at is the one-time part. Of course, in the one-time part, it is stipulated that the length of the of the key has to be the size, the length of the message, and of course that is impractical. So, so that is not practicable. So in that case, we don't really want to focus on this. So we have to find a better way, which way to do this. So what we will do is to give a small seed, you know, uh, which we will call here a seed. We give a small uh, set of string, sequence of string, and we use that to generate a long, long key string, all right? And we use what we call the random number generator here. So ROG, ROG, uh, PROG to generate uh, a long string, which we can then use for encryption. So the LFSR, or the linear feedback shift register, is an example of that. All right. So we will be looking at that. An LFSR is no, it's, it's just a, a composition of uh, flip flops. So as you can see, the flip flop that is indicated here, we're using a D, a, a D type uh, flip flops. It, that is what is typically used in practice. So uh, the output of one flip flop you know, it invariably is the input of the next flip-flop. And so you have a chain of flip-flops that, that I described here, okay? So a shift register, you know, if, pardon me if I'm, this may be elementary to some of you. So it's, it's, it's the way it's described here, the typical, uh, shift register is just for me for memories for for memory for storage. So uh, and so it's just a linear array of of of, of flip flops as you can see here. All right, uh, this is not how you know in 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 the literature they have a different ways of uh, of this of uh, the different way of classifying LFSR LFSR or uh, shift registers. You know we have. Uh, you know, serial in, serial out, you know, serial in, parallel out, you know, parallel in, you know, serial out, parallel in, parallel out. So that is in, 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 the, in the area, in engineering, that is how they would describe different types of shift register. But we have decided here for our, for our purposes to, to classify them using the, the following. So you have a shift register itself, and then you have a multiple return shift register, and then you have a feedback shift register that uses a function uh, to combine all the shift register that will be used for input, all right? And then you can also have a multiple return shift register. In the case of a multiple uh, return shift register, if, as you can see here, we're, we're, you know, we, we, the uh, flip-flop here, the output of that flip-flop can be fed to, uh, 
to other fifth floor, other fifth floor, you know, uh, that are ahead of it. So, so we we can use that. Or that is what we we'll call a multiple return shift by register. And they are very interesting. Mathematics governing this. You can, you know, use mathematics to represent this, as you will see, you know, as as as, as you will see later. So, uh, just like you have a multiple return shift register, you can also have a multiple uh, return uh, feedback shift register. And in particular, here we are interested in a linear feedback register. So, of all of these. We'll settle on just the linear feedback register. Okay. Why is it linear? Uh, it is linear because the function that describe that function that that describe the uh, the combination of of the flip flop to form the input is nothing but a linear combination of of all the flip flops. So in this case, we categorize the uh, the state of the flip flop, the initial state using that vector and then we use the con the, the constant value the cjz here to denote the connection vector so simply you know you can mathematically represent this there are two types of uh, uh, flip-flops uh, implementation in practice uh, one is the fibonacci uh, flip-flop which is, is which is represented in this diagram and the other one is a, a galore uh, Flip flow, which is represented in that form. It turns out that the mathematics are a little bit different, but overall they're very similar. Uh, in, but the implementation is different, and the the, the output, you know, may be different. Uh, but it generally will give you uh, a sequence of values. It doesn't matter which method you use. All right. So you know, after much. Uh, uh, Manipulation. One can represent the Fibonacci. Uh, you know, if you describe the sequence that you are getting from the initial sequence here, if this is the initial sequence that you have, then you generate uh, new se new uh, sequences or new new output by just following the initial sequence. So that you can represent in that form. This form you it can be used for the implementation if you so wish. All right. So uh, for the Gallo, uh, it's a little bit different. Uh, in the Gallo, you can you know, combine it to have a recursive formula. But it's not just as straightforward as in the case of the Fibonacci. So as you can see here, the, 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 the recursion is in two phases. The first phase will be the first uh, uh, n, n bits will be represented differently from the, the the other one so so it turns out that you know this implementation of uh, the Gallio implementation allows you to do a block of bits you know which is how it's implemented in my in this algorithm here so in the first uh, uh, the first bit n bit iteration you compute the 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 first set of vectors and then you can uh, the subsequent ones you can then define it the, the formula the same except that, you know, you're computing vectors in, in sequence. And if you have a, a vectorized uh, system, this would be more suitable than the Fibonacci. It turns out that the Galio technique is actually much faster, as is demonstrated here. So uh, this is comparing the Fibonacci and the Galio. All right, as, as, as demonstrated here, you can see that uh, if you know, if you go long enough, the Galio will, will, will perform better than the uh, the Fibonacci, and that is evident from the implementation as you saw over, over in the previous slides. Okay, you, the 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 autocorrelation uh, representation of them are very similar, so they, they have the same autocorrelation properties. You know, so that is what this is demonstrating. All right. There, there are so many uh, LFSRO-based ciphers in practice, but the typical ones are what I have here, A51, which is used on the GSN network, and W7 encryption is used mainly for image encryption. And the Trevon was one of the techniques that uh, was supported by EuroCrypt, you know, so 
Uh, this is also, you know, used for uh, data communications and so on and so forth. So these are the, the three primary or commonly used techniques that are out there. This actually, the A51 is what you try to have in, the, in your uh, global uh, global communication, mobile communication network, GSN. That, you know, so this is used on those ones, all right? So what are, what are we really interested in? We are interested in uh, LFSRO that have maximum period, uh, you know, that have maximum period, which is two raised to power n minus one. Now, this LFSROs uh, give can you are able to generate a, a sequence, uh, you know, that we consider more secure. Okay. So so it's very easy to take that that recursive formula that I gave you before. It's very easy to convert that using uh, generating function to come up with the characteristic polynomial, which is of this form. Now, both uh, Galio and the Fibonacci will it, it give you uh, the same uh, polynomial, except maybe the order of the, of the coefficient might change in this case, all right? So uh, what we are interested in are polynomials that are primitive. These are polynomials that whose whose uh, who, that are somorphic to LFSRO uh, that have maximum period. All right. So if an LFSRO is of maximum period, the the underlying polynomial that that govern that LFSRO is also is primitive, and we can actually prove that. All right, but you know, computing primitive, generating primitive polynomia is not uh, is not an easy exercise. It's very computationally expensive. All right, so even if we take advantage of some of the salient properties in the in the primitive polynomial, like symmetric and and the fact that uh, you know every polynomial, every primitive polynomial polynomial has even number of ones, you know, in the connection vector, or the fact that the constant uh, is always one. Even if we take all of this into account, the, the process is still very computationally expensive. All right? So, to, you know, this is a very crude way to generate uh, LF, uh, a maximum period uh, LFSRO. It's, it's very crude because this, you, you don't want to do this, actually. So, but this is just to demonstrate an algorithm for generating. They are, they are more efficient algorithm for this is just using a, a simple exhaustive, uh, or we call it a, a sieved method. So, so th this method here uh, will return you, uh, an LFSR uh, of maximum period. All right. So, uh, these are just examples, uh, you, know, uh, you know, they come in pairs, so you can take advantage of that in your implementation. So a pair primitive polynomial degree five is given by this, as you can see here, all right? So uh, if you take just one of these, one of these uh, uh, prim uh, LFSR, all right, you can, you can see that it's of a period 32, which demonstrates with you know two raised to power five minus one is thirty one. So so all these uh, uh, LFSROs defined by these connection vectors all have maximum period as you can see here. So this is so the 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 system the sequences that you generate or the states of the LFSRO. These are the states. You know the, these ones here are the state. They remain. Uh, the, the, you repeat the state as as you uh, implement this. All right, so these are you know just generating several of the uh, primitive polynomials. So uh, as you can see, this this can grow exponentially. The number of primitive polynomials can actually grow exponentially, and that's what gives right to it being computationally expensive. So uh, the formula here is really what we use. You can use that to. To, to determine how many primitive polynomials of degree n that you have, where uh, uh, phi here uh, is actually the Euler uh, 
five functions. All right. So all the LFSRO that we consider that you know we, we described before, if they are if they have maximum period, have very interesting properties. All right. Uh, the one is that you know the the number of ones and the number of zero generally will be less than or equal to one. Right. So that means the, the number of ones are, and the number of zero have, you know, have equal, the, the ones and the zeros have equal probability of being chosen, so in the sequence. I, I think that is very critical, you know, that means the, the probability is for each one of them is 0.5. You want that in your simulation. If it is not, then your system might, might not be uh, ra random enough, all right? So then we have, uh, you know, runs. We can do some runs. So runs, uh, you know, tells, gives you the patterns, you know, the different patterns that appear in the sequence. This is actually helping you to, using runs, you can actually uh, uh, do some linear comp uh, com uh, complexity on this. Doing com uh, com uh, linear complex complexity analysis on this is very, very interesting. You can also show that the autocorrelation function is of two values, as you can. So uh, two values. So I, as demonstrated in when I plotted it over here. See. So, all right. <clears throat> all right. So this is just to demonstrate the randomness. You know the Galio randomness tech, uh, property. So if you have an initial. Uh, sequence and then which will represent the state of that the, the seed so you can then and you are you're giving the uh the lfsr you can easily you know uh, generate a sequence uh, as you can see here uh and then you can take the first 31 bit here and anal analyze it using the properties that were provided for you there so in this case there are 31 bits all right the number of runs you can see here these are the different runs that you have so the number of runs that have of length one is 10 the number of runs with length two is four and the number of runs with length three is uh, two and the number of runs with length four is one and so on and so forth and then you can compute the autocorrelation function you can see it's one and whatever that is here 0 0.3548 and so on so you can say that because of this property, we can say that this LFSRO satisfy the random uh, the Galio, uh, Gallup randomness uh, postulates. So they are satisfied. But we're actually interested in generating, uh, you know, LFSRO maximum period with long long length. You know, so. Uh, we are also interested in a nonlinear function, so you can combine several LFSRO using a, a nonlinear function to form another uh, linear feedback register or uh, nonlinear feedback register. So you can have different nonlinear filtering functions, uh, you know, and so on and so forth. You can do some cascading also. Uh, cascading can also give rise to a nonlinear representation of LFSR, all right? So uh, our interest is large period, uh, la uh, better linear complexity, and of course, good statistical properties, okay? So typically what is done is, as you saw in the in the three example I gave you, you have, a mot you have several LFSR, you combine them to form a, a, a new system, a new uh, a PLG. My time is running now. Now, if if the LFSROs that you have here, if all these LFSRO are of maximum period, the period of the combined one is simply divided is this. Now, if they are not of maximum period, you use the uh, SCM to 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 describe the the period of the combined one. So instead of combine, if instead of multiplication here, we use the uh, uh, SCM least common. Uh, uh, multiple of, of, of the LFSR, you multiply them together, and that is what you get, all right? It's not that straightforward. That. Now, what we did was to kind of, uh, because it's computationally expensive, 
can we use a parallel system that's available on, on a commodity system like a laptop, you know, that has uh, several GPUs or multiple processors, you know, my, you know, so you can actually run this, write a parallel program, which is what I have here. This is a parallel uh, representation of that. Again, this is very primitive. You know, there are some improvements that have been done over this. So uh, with this information, you can then, you know, you have a parallel program that you can run on a simple system, like a laptop, your common laptop. And these are some of the results. Yeah, as you can see here, uh, this indicate how the number of uh, primitive polynomial computed by each processor. In the case of the four, here I have only four processors on that on that uh, system that I used. So I have four multiple uh, processors, and these are the uh, the efficiency. These are the CPU that you know that you that we have. For each, you know, this is the average CPU time. Actually, this is the CPU per per processor. So as you can see, I was able, I was only able to to compute this up to uh, n equals uh, seventeen, because when n equals eighteen, I, you know, it was taking too long to run on a, on a, on a single processor. Uh, you know, so. So that is where. So the efficiency seems very reasonable. 60 60 percent efficiency is not that bad at all. So uh, of course there is room for improvement, and we we'll constant we we'll continue we we'll continue to work on a better uh, parallel algorithms to be used here. Uh, I think in summary, so you you know, uh, string ciphers are better for hardware implementation. Uh, LFSRO uh, typically allow you to generate strings that have better properties, especially when you use minimum period uh, LFSROs. You have you can generate a uh, large period. You can have a uh, large linear complexity, and of course the uh, the the, pro the great statistical property of Galio. All right, and you know. We already saw that generating maximum period of FSRO is a challenge. It's you know, obviously computationally expensive. So uh, we have demonstrated how to find maximum period and FSRO using parallel processing on a commodity. Thank you very much. That is the end of my presentation. Any questions? Okay, thank you, Dr. Okambur, for your nice presentation, specifically related to stream cipher. It's a hot topic nowadays. Uh, yeah. When you are talking about a uh, huge amount of data communication, it needs to be protected using some techniques of uh, cryptography. So, yes. on behalf of uh, organizing committee, I'm very much thankful to you. And uh, I would like to invite you in India for our next conference. Oh, I would love to come. When is that going to be? Yeah. Dr. Sarma is also coming. Dr. Sarma is coming in the month of Maybe December. Maybe that's going to be. Yeah, it is It is uh, in January. There oh, is January, January, okay. There is Please January. Send, me, send me an invite, you know, formally, so that I can apply for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You are most welcome. You are most welcome. Yeah. Actually, we have, we have two conferences, one in IIT Roorkee, and another one is uh, in historic place of India, that is Jodhpur. Oh, wow. That is cool. I would love to come. <laughs> so, thank you. Thank you very much for being with us. Yeah. And for thank your presentation. You. Thank you. Yeah. Thank ah. you so much, sir, for showing thank up you. and for briefing us with your distinctive insights. Uh, next, I would like to call upon Dr. Aaron R. Raba. Sir, if you're present there, please to respond. Dr. Aaron. Dr. Aaron, are you here? Yes, not sure. Uh, moving forward to Dr. Preeti Sharma. She is not there. So. <laughs> Professor J.S. Duhan. Uh, next, uh, I would like to call upon Professor J.S. Duhan, 
uh, for addressing us and sharing his insights. Please. What can I have to share? I think we should start the session. Start the session. So let me let me tell you all the participants. Dear participants, uh, we are just going to call you uh, one by one as per your paper ID. If you are having your paper ID, just uh, uh, we are calling uh, you according to your paper ID, and uh, just uh, you you'll have to present your paper within three minutes because we have uh, the participant total number of participants are fifty six. Uh, related to science management and technology. So we are just going to allow you to present your paper within three minutes. Uh, we are uh, going to call one by one. Uh, Gauro, Jangra, Monica, and uh, Rajvis Ahalwar. Uh, Hello. 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 Okay. Okay. So is yes. Who is there? Monica. Uh, Gauro, Jangra. Yes. You can just share your screen and you start your presentation. Just remember, just uh, you have to conclude your uh, our paper within three minutes. Right, sir. Right. Just uh, good evening to all the panel members and the participants. So just let me share the PPT. Sir, I hope the PPT is visible to all. Yeah, it's visible. It's visible. You can start your presentation. Please. Okay. So, uh, my topic is the impact of the cable TV digitization and the broadcast audience research council on the television audience measurement system and the marketers media planning in India. So, uh, it's all about the key, how that uh, cable digitization that was the mandatory uh, by the we are uh, by the telecommunication industry. So, each and every household have to be mandatory set up the uh, set up box so that the real number of the uh, subscriber can be get a, uh, the BR, BRC Broadcast Audience Research Council can get able to get uh, the real number of the subscribers so that the uh, uh, revenue sharing model should be applied correctly. So first of all, without the uh, mandatory setup box, the BRC and the old broadcaster are not able to recognize the how many number of the subscribers are there. So that's why there is a benefit that a uh, transparency should take play, uh, will take place here and uh, a, a, a transparency in the revenue sharing will take place in that and due to the mandatory setup, uh, installing of the setup box. So it's all about uh, uh, the methodology that I have taken the data set of the three, uh, 50 respondent, 250 for, uh, from the viewers and the 100 from the cable operators from the uh, various uh, that operating uh, cable operating uh, cable operators and the because local cable operators or the multi system operators of the 100 cable operators along with that uh, 250 the uh, uh, viewers so the, uh, this was we collected on the basis of the 40 research statements and uh, on the 5 point liquor scale a structure question will be prepared and uh, we have to apply the some correlation and the regression analysis to see the impact of the one variable on the another to impact the cable digitization on the television audience measurement system and the uh, viewer satisfaction. So this was the data set. Uh, we have taken the demographic profile like the gender, the residence, occupation, age, education, family income and uh, type of beneficiary like the viewers and the multi-system operators. So this was the demographic profile of the respondents, and this was the reliability of the each and every uh, the constructs we have taken, like the cable TV digitization. There were total of the ten statements, and the reliability is uh, about the seventy um, percent. And then broadcast audience research council. The third uh, construct was the television audience measurement system, and the fourth was the marketers media planning. So these were the four major constructs or we consider variables for my study. Yeah, your slide is not moving, I think. Uh, uh, please, please move higher. Yeah. So these are my constructs. Yeah, Gaurav, you can run uh, your slide in full mode also. Just press F5. Uh, in the, okay, sir. So this was the, all about the, uh, the first hypothesis, there is no significant impact of the cable television digitization on the television 
audience measurement system so in this model uh, there is a we can see the a significant difference between the uh, variables so we can see the significant impact of the cable digitization on the television audience measurement system as the uh, significance level is less than the uh, 0.5 percent level of significance so it shows the significant difference and there is a significant impact of the cable uh, tv digitization on the tam systems so uh, the second the hypothesis that there is no significant impact of the cable t television digitization on marketers media plan so in that case is also there is a significant impact while because the cable tv digitization provides a, a transparency to the various media planners so that they can plan their media ki how they will advertise them and they can also budget their revenue for their advertisements so it can also attract the advertisers to put their investment in the advertisement at the right place in the correct place and the third hypothesis was that there is no significant impact of the barc on the television audience measurement system so these are, these are also that uh, the broadcast audience research council there is a mandatory setup uh, uh, mandatory uh, installing of the setup box so it um, it gives the different uh, policy telecommunication policies or mandatory policies resulted that the television audience measurement system will be correctly reporting the total number of the audience so ultimately it will get benefited to various policy holders as well as the viewers as well as the local cable uh, multi system operators like the hathway dan networks dan cables like that and city cables so they will get benefited from the local uh, local cable operators then the fourth uh, the hypothesis that there is no significant impact of broadcast audience research council on marketers media planning in india so the marketers also get benefited by this mandatory uh, installing of the setup box so that the uh, before that the, there is under reporting of the number of the subscribers then after installing the this uh, uh, setup box then they will get the correct and exact number of the subscribers so that the exact revenue sharing can take, take place and the real trp that uh, television rating point will be get uh, here so due to that the market will also get attracted towards that exact trp for the channels different channels so on the basis of the trp exact trp they can invest on the advertisements so now it's all about that there is a significant impact of the all the variables on the uh, 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 significant impact of the cable digitization and barc on the television audience measurement system and the markets media planning so it's all about my uh, topic thank you so much okay thank you gorav yes if you want to ask uh, sir i would like to ask gorav yes yes uh nice seeing you online i, I would like to ask you one question he, yes, uh, your research is related to media and entertainment industry so uh, yes. this industry has totally changed over the last couple of years so i would like to know what has been the progression of media and entertainment industry particularly the growth of ott the smart television that we have seen so yes, what are your views on so this also need to bear the study that there is a scope of to adding the more uh, topic because the ott by entering in the ott platform the people are just going towards that ott platform they are just uh not uh, just believing and the trust on the various dts and this uh, 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 tv they are the moving toward the ott so uh, obviously that uh, there is a more revenue uh, model there is a more revenue generation in the uh, cable t- t- television so that study need to be undertaken uh gorab how many hypotheses you have taken from your study what sir how many hypotheses are there Two, three, and there's four, uh, four hypotheses there. Okay. Okay. Thank you for your nice presentation. Thank you me. have one more paper? Yes, yes, sir. Uh, that also you want to present? Yes, sir. <laughs> If so, I can present. A study of academic leadership styles in HEI and its impact on faculty engagement and uh, satisfaction. So, please, yes. please present your paper. let me see when vijender singh is there vijender rozi rozi are you here 
नेक्स्ट प्रेजेंट इज सर विजेंद्र सिंह विजेंद्र आ रही है मैसेज कर दो उनको मैसेज कर दो नेक्स्ट प्रेजेंटेशन विजेंद्र सिंह yes uh, so next uh, my the next topic is the study of the academic leadership styles in the higher education in india and its impact on the faculty engagement and satisfaction so it's also in the uh, same theme and the same concept that i have just applied the i have taken the uh, data size of the the 300 faculty collected from the 15 institution of the higher education from the chandigarh uh, ut area so a structured question was used to collect the primary data so a stratified sampling is used the whole the population is divided into four strata like the east chandigarh west chandigarh north chandigarh and south chandigarh so four higher education institution including the colleges and universities were selected randomly from each strata so a sample of 15 faculty members are taken from the each institutions so now in this also i have applied the peers and correlation regression analysis to test the impact of the academic uh, test the impact of the academic leadership on the employee engagement and satisfaction so this is the conceptual framework of the study that there is a uh, type of the different leadership like the transform okay. transformational leadership the transaction leadership and third is the lazy fair leadership so the impact of all the three leadership we have to uh, just uh, study on the employee engagement and the satisfaction So this is the demographic profile. We have taken the demographic profile like the gender, age, designation, education, <laughs> tenure of the work, and in this the uh, first uh, first hypothesis related to the transformational leadership and the faculty engagement. So in this, uh, you can see there is a we can say the high the impact of the work because the the transformational leadership is highly correlated with the faculty engagement with the score of the zero point nine. So it shows that there is a uh, significant impact of the transformational leadership. Uh, on the faculty engagement so in the same it also impact on the employee job satisfaction with a score of 9 uh, 0.9 score about 96% there is a correlation between the transformational leadership and the employee job satisfaction so if the, there is a transformational leadership obviously it will impact the job satisfaction in transformational leadership there is something innovative and innovative ideas and a leader will be always be motivated to employ to do some innovative work then the third hypothesis for the transactional leadership and the faculty engagement so in that case it also show that there is a positive impact or we can say that there is a positive correlation and it is highly associated so there is a highly high correlation between the transactional leadership and the faculty engagement then the fourth hypothesis was the transactional leadership the impact of the transactional leadership and uh, the association between the transaction leadership and the employee job satisfaction in this there is also a positive association or a high correlation between the transaction leadership and the employee job satisfaction and the fourth for the uh, sorry fifth for the lazy fair leadership and the faculty engagement see how the lazy fair leadership impact and associated and correlated with the faculty engagement So here there is also the positive correlation between the lazy fair leadership and the faculty engagement, with a score of the zero point nine eight six. It shows the high correlation. And the sixth hypothesis was the lazy fair leadership and the employee job satisfaction. How they will satisfy? Uh, how it will be impact on the job satisfaction? So it also shows a positive and a high correlation between the lazy fair leadership and the employee job satisfaction. so these is the interrelationship between the all the types of the leadership and the employee engagement and the job satisfaction so it's all about the study that the all the type of the leadership will impact the positively impact uh, the employee job satisfaction and the engagement so it's all about my study for your nice presentation now thank you sir vijendra singh is ready vijendra yes sir yes sir i am ready yeah you can just you can share your screen and you start your presentation remember that you have only 3, 3 minutes of time to present your paper 3 minutes only 3 minutes sir yeah you try to cut okay okay minutes you 
switch off your video and then uh, you share your screen. Okay, okay. Arpreet Kaur. Yes, sir. Yes. Sir. This Pankaj is there. So you are simple. Sir, is my screen visible? Yeah, it's visible. You run your slide in full mode. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, please start. Run on full mode. Okay, sir. Okay. Uh, respected chair, co chair, participants, scholars, professors, uh, I am here to present my paper on human resource management in crisis, a study of Ramayan. This is a joint paper by myself and uh, my co author, Dr. Roji Patangia. I am not a student of management or teacher of management. So therefore, I am going to study and going to deliver. Vijendra, sorry to interrupt. Vijendra, yes, sorry, sorry to interrupt you. Please run your slide in full mode. Just press on slide show button is there. On the bottom, you can find that slide show button is there. Yeah. yeah. Is it okay, sir, now? It's okay now. Yes. Very interesting. Okay. 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 So, uh, I'm not a student of uh, management. Even then, I have tried to present a paper, human resource management in crisis. And we generally know because there is there are management departments in each and every university or institutes. And nowadays, this is very important area where uh, courses, programs are being run. And this, I mean, in itself is a discipline and big discipline because this is the you know, need of art because we run um, uh, businesses and uh, everywhere there is management of human resources that is essential to be managed. So therefore, uh, I start, Ken Robinson in this regard says that human resources are like natural resources. They are often buried deep. You have to go looking for them. They are not just lying around on the surface. So we have to, while managing the human resources we have to search out and we have to dig them deep out only then we can get best people and we are able to manage them otherwise they are not just you know on the surface level so that means that managerial skill are also necessary to uh, manage human resources so uh, this is very you know uh, common that in favorable time everything is managed when we are in time of peace, we are in power, everything is going fine and smooth, then everything can be managed, no problem. And there is a saying in Haryana or even in Hindi that Apni gali mein to kutta bhi share hota hai. Every cop fights best on its own dunghill. That means when everything is fine, everything can be managed easily without any, I mean, effort or not any, but I mean, without much efforts. But, and uh, management you know, and well-being and success, when everything is there, everything can be managed. So uh, management is there, well-being is there, and success is also there. But what if time is not favorable? When time is different, time is a time of crisis, when we are facing crisis, then how can we manage? And what are the essential skills, perspective, and value system that help us to manage human resources. So objective of this paper in this background, the objective of this paper is to, you know, uh, to find out or explore resources when you have no power, no penny and no territory, how to manage resources. Then uh, what are the leadership qualities to induct the local resources? Because in managed, in, in you know, business organizations, there are employees, but when you have no 
uh, employ your no subordinates such as and how do you manage those resources or those human beings third that team building how to build a team without i i again repeat that in time of crisis when you have no subordinate no you know power etc etc and condition to achieve the goal what are the condition to achieve the goal that you have set or you desire to achieve so in this case material and method is that i have taken you know ramayan to study and method is thematic and contextual analysis of the text and this paper focuses on you know key characters just two three characters i'll uh, you know because i have very uh, limited time so key characters and their hrm practices during crisis situation furthermore identifying hrm strategies and uh, what is their leadership uh, style employee or syndicate engagement technique how can uh, i mean syndicate or employees be engaged then uh, i discuss it that rams vision first there must be you know vision what we are what one is uh, you know to do what one desires to do or achieve and therefore there must also be integrity to achieve that goal full focus and a uh, full integrity and then there must be ability to inspire others and all these qualities were found in ram so ram's quality that vision integrity and ability must be in uh, in an hr so first quality in addition to these vision integrity ability there must be egolessness see ram's case that ram was a king and even then when he go, goes to exile then he uh, bows before all the persons who met him and he sought help without any hesitation forgetting that he once upon a time he was a king may it be uh, you know the uh, the boatman for the first time he met to cross the river or may it be other you know wander or other persons or people he met on the journey then effective communication for that communication is essential part of you know management effective communication and he expresses his uh, fear he expresses uh, lord ram expresses fear his aim his plan everything he shares and in an effective way that is why he was able to convince the people uh, and uh, he had been able to achieve the aim then mutual trust is also essential mutual trust between the both the parties may it be the leader or may it be the subordinate or syndicates so in that case ram had qualities to build that trust and therefore all the subordinates and all the persons he met on the journey uh had trust in ram whatever ram said ram never you know uh never uh was free from his words never you know undid his words ever so therefore all the team members or the persons he engaged in his mission had trust in ram full faith i must say and likewise ram also had made to be hanuman hanuman you know uh assured that he'll do that task then he did and like uh, ram also had uh, until until or unless a leader has trust or faith in the team members one cannot achieve the goal and one cannot engage uh, in the task all the employees indicates subordinates and in addition to it there must be commitment commitment is also essential ram was committed to his mission uh, and uh, he first he was to search out sita and he i mean uh, go to search her thereafter he wanted get uh, wanted to get the sita back therefore he had dialogue and communication i had also i i already mentioned effective communication therefore he uh, sends envoy the messenger angad and all those persons hanuman even but that couldn't work out so therefore lastly he had only one option that to fight and to you know wage a war against injustices or of ravan so therefore uh, he had committed and he uh, you know fulfilled his commitment he had commitment that is why he was able to fulfill the aim commitment is also essential and not only it was ram who had commitment to his aim likewise once they were part of the team of ram wanner or all other warriors they also had commitment towards their duties and towards their mission so 
uh, that is why ram was able to commit uh, ram was able to win the war otherwise just think a person who is penniless who is like a beggar the powerless and who is on exile just few i mean clothes and even then he wins the war wins the fight so this was uh, feasible only because of the uh, uh, human resource management and uh, human resource management and because of you know these qualities and team building team ram was expert in team building so wherever he went he uh, made the people on his side to be on his side so uh, may it be you know bali may it be case of sugriv in and and in that, that is also essential that whenever we are to help one then we must always stand by the sir just one minute by the side of the weaker and that is why we see ram stood uh, by the side of sugriv rather than being sir there is disturbance do you want to say something no no just to complete it within one minute oh okay sir sir doing 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 so ram uh, stood by the side of you know weaker uh, section may it be sugriv and may it be you know other uh, characters or person too collaborations and coordination that is also essential that ram collaborated and coordinated with the locals rather than you know going back to the princes and kings to seek help ram coordinated and collaborated with the locals so that is also essential all the time hrs are not going to back to the power structures and this and that whatever resources available we do have with us we have to manage with them only and lastly the empathy and uh, all this i mean i am not able to see this screen so empathy is also compassion empathy uh, kindness that is also essential that means that we must have personal uh, touch in communication with the peers or team members then team prioritization their uh, pro uh, problems first when, when you know we build team their problems must be sorted out first in this case uh robert eager soul says that we rise by lifting others we can be good leader good hr only if we are able to help our subordinates then concern for well being of syndicates in crisis may it be lakshman and sugriva in every case ram uh, kept himself uh, i mean at back and he took care of all the team members may it be lakshman sugriva or whatever uh, or whoever he took care of all those and uh, in that case Uh, see just one example uh, our our prime minister narendra modi in last you know chandrayaan mission not uh, this one just one uh, one back or two three couple of i mean uh, weeks back but earlier one when it it had got failed then he patted the director rather than scolding or rather than i mean criticizing the team he patted this is the quality of a good leader and that is why we see that it is now going to be a successful mission so this is the quality and problem solving i have already told Con in conclusion i can say this research emphasizes that good leadership can manage human resource in a better way in the time of crisis even though they are not related to the leader or his her organization by having clear vision integrity honesty effective communication dropping all egos prioritizing team members problems and providing a solution for them a strong team build building can made through mutual trust behaving in a manner do as romans do when in the rome and fulfilling commitments made true leadership is able to convince everyone in the surrounding even from the critics and enemies compassion is the key dialogue discussion is the only way to solve all the problems so uh, this was my paper and uh, now if anybody wants to yes uh, ask question and Fine query i am ready yeah bijender uh, thank you thank you very much yes sir bijender nobody doubts the leadership ability of road ram i would not be touching yes, down sir. on the uh, people management skills of road uh, ram in the war effort but i but i am interested in as a person is Uh, i would like to know ki uh, in the context of uh, you can say exiling lord ram both his father as well as lord ram uh, both both uh, these men failed uh, with respect to communicating with their wives or you convincing their wives first of all uh, you can say because of his wife uh, 
Lord um, uh, King Dasharath exiles uh, Lord Ram, and he is not able to convince his wife. And thereafter, we see that Lord Ram was not able to uh, convince Sita to stay inside that uh, during the uh, marriage phase. So, uh, because you belong to the, uh, you can say, field of literature, I would like to ask you, uh, and maybe the context, uh, like Shakespeare said, uh, uh, frailty, thy name is woman. Uh, how, yes, should yes. Man, how should a man handle his woman? What are, you, <laughs> what are your views on it? Because woman does not listen to man. Yes. Hmm. Neither in the times of uh, Ramayana, no, no father. Sir, sir. So far as women is concerned, I mean, there a person is not the leader in a to handle a woman. I mean, one is partner, and now we are talking of the uh, leadership, right? And she she has equal rights to say, to debate, to discuss, and more importantly, that the case of women. Because there also man doesn't, I mean, uh, act as a leader. He, he he becomes the politician. I mean, see, in any case, husband wife is are there. There is politics, and for that, uh, if you want to, you can read J. S. Mill's essay. Question can be raised. So why this patriarchy and why all these structures are still are continuing? Otherwise, you know, slavery system has already been abolished. Other systems has already been abolished, but still patriarchy and the kind of, you know, tussle between husband and wife is still going on. And even women don't complain of the same. They have internalized the system. They have internalized the problems. Now everything seems to be normal. So that is a different case, case, sir. Thank you, Vizend. Thank, Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for your nice presentation and nice topic you have nicely incorporated Achara with uh, Ramayana. So it's a really interesting <laughs> topic and uh, I wish you thank all you, the thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. for your future research. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, okay, sir. Okay. I would like to call Harpreet Kaur. I think Harpreet is there. Harpreet, oh, are you here? Uh, good evening, all the members. Hi, I am Shari, co-author of Harpreet, will be presenting. Okay. Okay. Shari Singla, co-author of Harpreet Kaur. Uh, Shari Singla. Okay. Yes, sir. You are along with Pankaj Chandra, na? No, no, sir. I am with Harpit Kaur, Sani. Okay, you are okay. Presenter, please. Please do your slides. Yeah, please share your slides. Presenter, okay. please stop. Sir. Thank you. Yes, yes. Because you are Is my screen visible? After this. Hello. Yeah, it's visible. Okay, 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 okay. Good evening, all the members. My topic for presentation is a study on customer satisfaction in the insurance sector using bibliometric analysis. Customers are the most significant individuals in the insurance industry, just as in other industries. However, it is not always possible in this industry to adjust insurance policies to suit customer preferences. The reason for this is that regulatory authorities have a strong grip on the insurance industry. Also, due to the ever-increasing competition, companies make huge efforts to attract and retain customers to increase their market share as their customers can easily switch to other companies at the time of policy renewal. Hence, businesses can succeed by focusing on customer relationship as they help in the retention of customers. Diverse studies have been conducted on relationship Customer satisfaction yeah. in the various yeah. sectors. Siri, your slide is not moving. Your slide, Sorry, is, your slide is not moving. It's okay. not changing. It's not changing. Oh, should I restart it or what to do? Yeah, you can you can restart it. Okay, okay, sir. Okay, sir. Okay, Dr. Goel, good evening. Dr. Goel, good evening. Good evening, sir. How are you? I am fine, I am fine, sir. Nice Return. to see you. Return back from uh, Jammu? Yes, sir, yes, sir. Now in Jodhpur. Okay, great. 
Great. Thank you. Yeah, Siri, you can share your screen, please. Sir, just a minute. Actually, it's not open. Just a minute. Pankaj, are you ready after this? Pankaj, uh, yes, sir, I'm ready. Ah, yes, sir. Yes, sir, I'm ready. I can see two instances. I think you have joined through laptop as well as through the mobile device also. Uh, yes, sir. Actually, I am in Kony, so there is a problem of uh, power. There, okay. so I, have, I have login from two devices. Sir, I am not able to. Uh, uh, yeah, just, 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 just you can start your presentation. Please share. After all, yes. after this. Yeah, sorry, yes, sir. Sir, sir. you be ready after this, no? Oh, yeah, okay, Pankaj, please, please conclude within three minutes. Ah, yes, sir. Share your screen. Okay, sir, I am sharing my screen. Suman Devi. Ping Kardo Suman Devi. Suman Devi. Uh, my screen is visible to all of you. Ah, yes, uh, your screen is visible, but your slide is not visible, Pankaj. Ah, you can check from that. Ah, yeah, Pankaj, you share your screen. Ah, yes, sir, I am saying. Yeah, it's visible. You can start a presentation, please. Yeah. So, uh, good evening, all of you. Today I am going to present a presentation on the design and analysis of on-demand data collection system in wireless sensor network using mobile sync. I am an assistant professor in Gurugansidas University, Bilaspur. Sensor sensing unit, they have limited computation unit and wireless communication capabilities. There are different applications of this sensor network like monitoring of objects, monitoring of an area, monitoring of both area and objects. The example of objects are condition-based maintenance, medical, and structural monitoring. Monitoring of an area are environmental monitoring, precision agriculture, indoor climate control, and example of monitoring of both area and objects are disaster management, healthcare, etc. So there are so many challenges in this wireless sensor network, like energy efficiency, data routing, network lifetime, packet delivery, uh, throughput, congestion control, and twin delays. So uh, these are the literature review of my uh, this research study. Uh, I have uh, uh, <clears throat> reviewed so many papers of 2023, 22, 21, and 20. And these are the different research outcomes of these different papers. So uh, I have uh, implemented this paper in cup carbon uh, simulator. So I have taken these uh, basic assumptions, like uh, all the nodes are static and homogeneous. Initial energy and communication of all the sensor nodes are fixed. The mobile sync travels at a uh, same speed, constant speed. When a transmitter and receiver are communicating, there are no obstacles between them. The journey of mobile sync begins and ends outside the sensing field. That is also known as base station. So mobile sync will start from base station and end to the bed, base okay. station. The mobile sync is able to timely gather data from the cluster heads. The different contributions of these studies are, uh, so in order to minimize the power consumption, as I have already told you that there are so many challenges. So the first challenge is minimizing power consumption. So an optimal number of cluster heads is, are selected where mobile sync visit to collect the data to these cluster heads. We have proposed an on-demand data collection using mobile sync and the name of this algorithm is ODD CMS, on-demand data collection using mobile sync. Uh, evaluation of this existing and proposed work is conducted using cup carbon simulator. And we have compared our this ODD CMS with this ED, EDA algorithm, VGRSS algorithm, PSOBS, and RKM algorithms. These are the uh, different phases of our proposed algorithm. First, uh, we... Please conclude in one minute. Ah, yes, sir. 
so these are the different basically there are two phases in this odd cms first is uh, cluster formation we have used leach algorithm for cluster formation and second is uh, cluster head selection so uh, i want to uh, show you some exa real time example this is the sir within one minute i will conclude okay so this is this is one real example you know there are this green nodes are the cluster head nodes blue nodes are the member nodes so this uh, when is our mobile sync so first mobile uh, this mobile when is uh, sharing their location broadcasting their location to all the cluster head nodes and uh, in this example see here ch4 cluster head 4 is wants to send their data to this mobile sync so they have sent one message using this blue link now this mobile when uh, is visiting the location of cluster head 4 and they are collecting the data from this cluster head node so this is the main objective this is the main function of my algorithm so uh, we have used these different simulation parameters for uh, simulating this algorithm this is the screenshot of uh, our cup carbon simulator these are the different results of our uh, this algorithm uh, first for energy consumption the energy consumption of our algorithm is very low network lifetime network lifetime is higher than this for algorithm throughput data acquisition latency and packet delivery ratio so overall our algorithm is 33% better than this all these four algorithms okay. thank you great very good work dr chandra thank so you sir is, and thank you for your nice presentation now uh, i would like to call siri siri are yes. you able yes sir hear your screen please yes, yes sir okay. uh, rest of the participants uh, please be prepared so that you can conclude within 3 minutes Sir, is it visible now? Yeah, it's visible. Okay. Okay, yes. sir. Is it changing from the first slide, from the yes. introduction? Yes. 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 Okay, okay. Okay, okay, okay. So, coming back to the objectives of the study, these are the objectives of my study. First one is how the satisfaction in the insurance sector has been covered in publication. Which journal have made the most substantial contribution? Which is the most prolific author? Which is the most cited article? And what are and which countries and institutions are most productive in this specific field? research methodology of bibliometric study of 127 research publications have been conducted using the scopus database the wasper software was used to analyze the research articles containing set concerning satisfaction in insurance sector research citation analysis was used to achieve the objectives of the study this is the search strategy that has been used from the uh, scopus database total 8805 articles were discovered but after applying filters 127 articles are included in this specific study this is the data analysis this is the first diagram concerning the production output then this is the list of the top 10 journals which are contributing in this in this specific field and this is the list of top 10 authors this is the list of top 10 documents which are mostly cited this is the list of top 10 countries These are the these are the top ten institutions which have contributed in this specific research field. Coming back to the conclusion, the highest production which we can see from this diagram, highest production was in the year two thousand sixteen and two thousand nineteen. Managing service quality, and that is the journal name, had the most substantial contribution with total two hundred and four citation. This was published by Emerald. Rand G K found to be the most prolific author related to satisfaction in the insurance sector. Path analysis of perceived service quality, satisfaction, and loyalty in Greek insurance was the most often cited article in this specific field. Taiwan, with total ten documents, found to be the most productive country in this research area. Department of International Business was found to be the significant institution with two thirty citation citations. So that's it from my side. These are the references. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Sri Sri, for your presentation. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay, sir. Thank you. I would like to call Indu. Indu, she is approaching us to reschedule her presentation. So, Indu, are you ready? Yes, sir. I am ready. Thank you so much, sir, for considering my request. then we will come back to suman devi after the presentation of dr indu suman devi 
please be ready after this okay indo you can share a screen okay sir Is it visible, sir? Yeah, it's visible. Uh, My slides are visible, sir. Yeah, it's visible. You run uh, on full mode. Yes. Okay, sir. Thank you so much. So my topic is enhancing sustainability in beekeeping, artificial feeding strategies during dearth period, and their impact on honey quality. Is my slide is moving? It's not moving. Ah, yeah, please. Okay, okay, okay. Ah, yes. Now yes. it is moving. Yes, it's moving. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh, thank you, sir. So, uh, beekeeping. It is a scientific subject which comprises of rearing and management of bees, production of valuable products, research on bees and bee products, and has immense importance in agriculture as well as, as, well as horticulture. Uh, honey bees, as you, we all know, are diurnal insects that belong to order Hemiptera and very useful insect from economic point of view as they are source of very useful products like honey, royal jelly, propolis, wax, bee venom, etc. These are different life stages of honey bees. Uh, here is uh, benefits of uh, beekeeping, but uh, I will skip this slide as we have very less time. And uh, 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 pollen and nectar is the food of honey bees. now management of honey bees honey bees require two type of management general management and uh, specific management they require general management around the year like general cleanliness of beehive protection from uh, enemies uh, prote uh, protection from enemies and the uh, availability of water resources near the apiary they require specific management during the dearth period of the year dearth period is what the period when there is scarcity of bee flora is called dearth period so there are three solution for this colony migration sugar feeding and protein diet feeding so firstly we have colony migration if we talk about uh, colony migration migration of bee colonies to distant floral rich places to fulfill their nutritional requirement and to maintain different colony parameters during the period is called as colony migration but there are drawbacks of colony migration like mortality due to stress mortality due to accident during transportation it requires huge labor and expenses crowding of bee keeper at particular promising site there is sugar feeding and uh, there are also drawback of sugar feeding like uh, like it uh, compensate only nectar part of their food and not support egg laying yeah, and it invites enemies like ants here uh, protein diet feeding a protein rich pollen substitute or pollen supplement which stimulate different colony parameters during floral scarcity period of the year like it promote egg laying and brood rearing maintain bee population yield more honey in next floral season Now, objective of the study to feed nutritionally and biochemically balanced artificial protein-rich formulated diet to Apis mellifera colonies to analyze the effect of feeding artificial diet on uh, quality of quality and quantity of honey uh, before feeding and after feeding artificial diet. This is a uh, work plan of the study. Here uh, you know, we show the maintenance of a pyre at our uh, university campus and the extraction of uh, honey uh, done before feeding. and the uh, um, and extracted honey was collected in air tight containers pollen collection was done to assess the dearth period and here we can see that maximum pollen collection was observed during february and march month it was also concluded that bees are more active during this season due to favorable weather conditions selection of ingredients and preparation of diet formulations five diet formulations were prepared by using different protein rich ingredients and carbohydrate rich ingredients Biochemical analysis of diet samples uh, was done before feeding. Here we can see the diet in powder form, diet in uh, diet uh, diet in slurry form when it was under process, and diet uh, final form of diet in patty form. Preliminary trials uh, were done um, by um, to check the effectiveness of methods. We tested two methods to check the effectiveness: top bar method and entrance method of feeding, and we found that the top bar method top bar method of feeding is the best method so that detailed experiments were um, carried out by using the top bar method of the feeding this is our experimental design detailed feeding experiments were carried out on the set of uh, three colonies 
the first set of colon is uh, given with diet one standard diet the second third fourth fifth set of colon is given with the, uh, the diet uh, formulated in the laboratory and sixth set of colon is considered as positive control as 50% sugar syrup uh, was given to this set of colony and the seventh uh, group of colon is uh, considered as negative control as nothing uh, give uh, nothing uh, was given to this set of colonies as a uh, stimulative diet and the time over please conclude in 30 seconds okay okay sir so uh, here we can see the effect of stimulative diet on colony parameters and uh, we found that the uh, diet second is the best diet and uh, really? the quant quantity of uh, uh, quantity of uh, honey uh, was also found higher in case of diet 2 and uh, uh, these are the parameters so this is the conclusion of the study nutritionally and biochemically balanced artificial protein protein rich formulated diet were fed to apis mellifera colonies feeding of diet resulted into improved and enhanced colony parameters among experimental colonies in comparison to control a significant increase was recorded in the total quantity of honey produced by experimental colonies in the next blooming period when compared with control colonies However, large-scale trials are required to carry out on commercial apiaries to make this formulation commercially promising so that it can be recommended for its use by beekeepers during dearth period. These are the benefits of the study. And uh, at last, I pause with this cute. No more bees, no more pollination, no more plants, no more animals, no more man. So please take care of honeybees. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Dr. Indu, for your nice presentation. Thank you so much, sir. And... Uh, now I would like to call Mamta Bora, Suman Devi, I think. Suman Devi, are you here? Suman Devi, paper ID 49, post-COVID-19 uses of app commerce. I think Suman is not there. Now I would like to call Mamta Bora, paper ID is 55, Jaspreet Kaur and Mamta Bora. Are you yes, here? Yes, sir. Good evening, sir. Mamta, are you here? Okay, you can start your presentation, please. Okay, sir. Please share your screen. Yes, sir, I'm sharing. You'll be with a message. If you have any problem, then we can go to next. Sir, step. my screen is visible? Yeah, okay. yeah. I'm Uh, good evening to all of you. Uh, my topic of presentation is effect of upper limb sensory motor training versus resistance training in management of patients type 2 diabetes. It was it is a randomized control trial. Uh, first of all, uh, I am starting with the aim of my study. The present study aimed to assess the clinical effectiveness of sensory motor training and resistance training on nerve amplitude, nerve latency, grip strength, and manual dexterity in the um, patients with type 2 diabetes, which may help in deciding better management in the diabetic population. So my study was approved by the uh, IEC meeting held at Department of Physiotherapy, GGSNT Hisar, and also in the, with the fulfillment of uh, consort guidelines and uh, registered under the CTRI. Uh, trial design, uh, it, is, it was a single blinded randomized control trial with parallel group allocation ratio. Uh, it, is, uh, it was a pre-test, post-test and follow-up intervention. <coughs> Participants uh, were recruited from various hospitals, private clinics, com uh, communities of Hisar City uh, and the outpatient department of physiotherapy from GGSNT. Uh, inclusion criteria. Uh, patients were diagnosed as di type 2 diabetes in accordance with WHO with HbA1c more than 6.5. Some demographic information and disease history was recorded. Proper explanation of the trial was provided in local language to the participants who agreed to participate in the study. 
uh, my study is according to helensky de uh, declaration <coughs> inclusion criteria uh, is uh, type two uh, patients were type 2 diabetics more than 5 years both males and females and age between 35 to 65 were included uh, randomization and blinding randomization process is done by the computer generated random number table and uh, um, consecutive number sealed opaque envelopes were used for concealment before the randomization in allocation ratio 1 ratio 1 ratio 1 Sample size calculation was done by the uh, MCID number, which was 6.5 for my primary outcome users. 96 uh, participants were randomly allocated into three groups, uh, RT group, SMT group, and control group. In RT group, resistant training group, 40 minutes of resistance training uh, with uh, elbow bicep curls, shoulder front raises, shoulder lateral raises, shoulder uh, pullbacks with help of therabands of green, blue, and gray color, as well as hand and finger exercises with silicone hand gripper and finger stretcher were used. In SMT group, uh, some warm-up exercises and uh, some tabletop games, uh, catch and hold, uh, catch and drop technique, uh, and uh, by which, uh, some exercises with the oscillating device were performed. In control group exercises, uh, uh, 10 minutes warm up exercises like uh, in uh, um, self stretching thrice a week for six weeks in all the groups. <coughs> Outcomes my outcome were, uh, were assessed by uh, Neurostim, EMG, NCV, EP system, Medicaid were used for nerve conduction studies. And uh, secondary outcome measure were, was used uh, by, uh, for, um, by the BBT. Uh, block and uh, box box and block test wooden box was used to assess statistical analysis was done by spss uh, normality was checked uh, baseline readings was uh, uh, recorded uh, bo uh, baseline uh, readings and uh, normality was normal so parametric tests were used repeated measure anova was used uh, a mixed design repeated measure anova was used for comparing the uh, uh, within group comparison and for between group comparison, uh, post hoc analysis was done by least significant difference. P value was set as uh, less than 0 0.05. Uh, this was a flow chart, a participant recruitment flow chart of the study as per consort guidelines. Anta, please conclude. Okay, sir. My result uh, shows that uh, within group analysis, the result reflect that there was a statistically significant difference between pre-intervention and post-intervention scores and also pre-intervention to follow-up scores. There was non-significant difference between scores of post-intervention and follow-up assessment. These were uh, some figures. Ma majority of variables have statistically significant difference between the groups. However, there were stat statistically non-significant difference in nerve latency and manual dexterity between RT and control group, reflecting that SMT was more effective in improving the nerve latency as compared to resistant training group. Uh, conclusion, the study provides new data for the patient with type 2 diabetes that this population can be benefited from SMT and RT by improving the nerve parameters, enhancing grip strength and manual dexterity. Both the training were feasible can be applied to these patients, specifically with the diabetic peripheral neuropathy. Therefore, it can be concluded that SMT and RT can be effective and safe method for improvement in the nerve recovery and muscle weakness. SMT may be a promising approach in diabetic patients, so further study can be done to address a combination of this training on the various parameters to improve the health and quality of life in these patients. These are references. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Amita. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Now, Jyoti Bansal, are you here? Jyoti Bansal. Jyoti is not there. So, Dr. Goyal, you are going to present or Tina? Tina is also there, I think, here, co author. Yeah, Dr. Goyal. Hello, sir. Good evening. Uh, Tina, you are. Okay. Yes, sir. I am going to present. Okay, okay. please. Good, e good evening, sir. Good evening, chair, and good evening, co chair. And uh, I also would like to thank my. Uh, co-author Dr. Krishnari Goel. Uh, with like, I would uh, present my screen.
प्लीज शेयर स्क्रीन करना Is it, is it visible, sir? No, it's not visible. Ah, yeah. Oh, so my uh, topic is social economic implications of poor countries in global uh, global economy. Uh, sir, before starting, I would like to enlighten the uh, a tsunami incident. It was happen uh, is happening in two thousand four. Tsunami coal boom. One coal boom that emerged uh, between Japan, India, Australia, and United States. Which was called as quad. It was. It happened in two thousand four. Uh, that uh, that quad group had the objective of coordinating multilateral disaster relief and humanitarian assistance operations. And but over the years, uh, some uh, geopolitical issues have arisen, and that turned altogether the uh, objective of this uh, group towards the politics and called it as the uh, NATO. and asian nato but it is not so so i would like to uh, throw back the objective of the original objective of this quad group i would like to enlighten that point that it what what was the original objective of this it was not like uh, it has been presenting uh, by some kind of ina your 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 slide is not moving it is static it's not moving I think there is some uh, internet issue. In internet connectivity, connectivity issue is there from your side. Okay, okay, sir. And uh, you try to you try to move your slides. We are with you. I'll present okay. again. Yes, yes, yes. So is it? Uh, is not, it it's not visible. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Now it's moving. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. So, uh, so I would like to uh, explain the uh, objective of objective of this paper. Uh, with this, uh, this one group has been originally developed as a group to uh, help the humanity and uh, help them as a help the society. But uh, over the years, people have Turn this objective, uh, politicize this. Uh, but I want to make the uh, make sure through this paper that this group, which is having a, uh, actually I would like to uh, present a data, which will make it more clear. Wait a second. Uh, Can we see? Yeah, Dina, you have uh, internet connectivity issue from your side. Yeah. Uh, so it's not visible, right? Hmm? I think uh, that that is that is the reason why you are not able to move your slide. Also, bandwidth is required. Bandwidth is not there. Uh, sir, uh, can uh, if you are able to listen. I think yeah no issue no issue you can uh, okay. uh, you can stop now uh, sir actually i would, uh, i just want to say that this group uh, has 30% of global fdi stock and uh, 34.8 trillion in gdp with 1.9 billion people population covering global so i uh, this as a group as a whole can uh, can help but uh, world in various ways which is uh, which exactly it is doing uh, if i am not able to share the screen i don't think so i will no issue no issue tina no issue tina you can stop we have seen your presentation and your topic also thank you thank you very much for your presentation Sorry. and one Sorry. thing i would like to inform to all the participants that uh, we are uh, we are going to We are going to send you this soft copy of your certificate. Those who are uh, from nearby Hisar, they can come to university and they can collect it from Dr. Gaur. And those who are uh, from outside, we'll be sending them this certificate very soon. It's uh, like uh, tomorrow.
tomorrow we'll send it and one more information that you have to send your abstract or full length paper to a google form which you are going to share and uh, so that will publish your proceeding within a week this is one information from our side now agnesh pandey you can start with yes sir how are you agnesh good evening sir i am fine sir okay you can start yes sir just i am starting my presentation and please complete within 3 4 minutes <laughs> yes sir sure agnivesh i'll i'll bring your certificate na huh? hard copy of certificate yes sir sure sir sure sir sir uh, my screen is visible to you yeah yeah it's visible you run in full uh, uh, yes sir now it is full, uh, full screen it's not full screen you just press f5 so that it will uh, i have already pressed it sir okay it's not okay, okay no no issue you can move it we can move it uh, good evening all the session chair persons uh, good evening hota sir uh, today i am going to present a, a topic aerial object tracking in real time using background subtraction algorithm uh, now this uh, when the uav is using more time to uh, track the objects so it is a very big challenge to track the objects which are very tiny from the top view for that i am presenting one uh, method background subtraction method uh, or algorithm by which we can track the object on the characteristics of the movement only there is no need to the annotate only using the some simple image processing uh, methods and track the ob uh, moving objects so for the outline of my presentation is the uh, we will introduce the background subtraction and the why the background subtraction is important the, then the i will present the framework of my object detection and tracking method then the results and conclude the with the advantages and limitations as as it is very known method the background subtraction in the background subtraction as you know we leverage the feature of the frames new, which is the summing yeah. techniques your screen is not moving your slide is not moving yeah Just change your slide please yes sir i am changing from my side it is changing you please unshare it and then once again you share it okay sir i will try to share from the my mobile phone yeah it's i think there is again internet connectivity is is there you are i think that's why okay Yes, move it. Okay, it's, sir. It's so fast. Fast light. You move it. Yes, sir. Now this is the outline of my uh, work. we will first go for the background subtraction yeah. then background subtraction uh, importance the framework of object detection yeah. and this mobile view is necessary yes go ahead advance yes sir a background subtraction is a technique used to separate the foreground from the background in a video frame the basic idea to subtract the background i image from the current frame of the video stream to obtain the foreground object the background image can either be static image or the dynamic update image that adapt the changes in the screen this is the importance i directly discussed the uh, this background diagram for moving object detection what i have actually done in my uh, this work i uh, just i have chosen the sequence of the frame on the basis of this frame i have generated the background model in which that background model the object which are uh, 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 appearing in frame by frame that will be uh, removed to calculate the background uh, uh, background model by using the median filtering 
on the basis of this uh, median filtering again i am calculating the binary mask of this images and again on the use of this binary mask again calculating the median mask then these median masks are subtracted from the background uh, model and it will generate it, it will generate and detect the uh, objects which are which are not as a part of the background model so that can be detected as a moving objects so the basic mathematics behind this is the background frame the background frame at the time of t have a value of x and y and uh, the if in in the next frame that is the b x y t when we subtracting this and comparing with the some threshold value the object will be uh, subtracted as a mask the median filter then on apply to remove the noises uh, from the output result and apply the contour and the morphological operation to find out the exact and efficient tracked moving object so what is the actually the new thing in this uh, task is the median mask frame before that there no one used the median mask frame they have used the uh, average mask frame or the summing of the mask frame but nobody has used the median mask frame the beauty of median mask frame is it can reduce the noise and it can also able to detect the object which are very tiny these are the some advantages and the some the benefits of the median mask frame applied to the background model and the results in the first frame i the input frames are there on the basis of these input frames we calculate the background frame of, by using the median filtering this random frames of the 50 the medium background frame is generated on the basis of this input image frames the median mask frame is generated then after the subtraction of the median frame from the background frame the continuous the moving objects can be detected yes so these sir. are the advantages and limitation of the method agnivas please yes, including <laughs> these are the some differences yeah thank you sir thank you very much agnivas for concluding your presentation within time and uh, mm -hmm. now i would Thank like you. to call renu bala renu bala is here uh, renu please share your screen adrenesh please unshare your screen please yes yeah renu bala Renu Bala. And Harleen Kaur. Harleen Kaur. Harleen is also not here. Sudhanshu Gupta. Paper ID sixty-seven. Sudansu, are you here? Sudansu is not there. Radhika, paper yes, ID. Yes, sir, I'm present. Okay, you can start your presentations. Please share your screen. My screen is visible, sir. Not visible not yet. Visible. Not visible, Radhika. Okay, sir. Wait, wait, sir. Now it's visible, sir. Not, not visible. Yes, yes, sir. Good evening to all the dignitaries who are present here. I am Radhika, presenting my research paper on behavioral biases. an overview of cognitive and emotional influences on decision making moving to the first slide it is visible sir yes yes okay moving to the first slide there is a difference between traditional finance and behavioral finance uh, traditional finance assume rationality efficient market and also assume that individuals have all the information to make the rational decisions but on the other side behavioral finance 
assume uh, irrationality in efficient market and based on psychological factors that affect the individual decision making process in other words we can say that behavioral finance uh, is based on shortcuts and rule of thumb for making their decisions then next slide is there behavioral biases are of two types first one is cognitive errors and second one is emotional biases cognitive errors are related to our human mind that means we have any thinking and attitude problem and also we don't have any knowledge of statistics but these errors can be prevented and controlled by the education advice and information on the other side emotional biases are related to our heart related to our feelings and emotions which cannot be controlled but we have to adapt it while making our decisions then moving to the next slide there are common there are common behavioral biases which are conservative bias representative bias illusion of control bias inside bias anchoring low aversion over confidence and many more <coughs> the following are the uh, influence of behavioral biases on our decision making first one is poor risk management second one is irrational investment choice third one is financial losses fourth one is impact on creative thinking and problem solving abilities fifth one is impact on communication as well last but not the least by concluding this ppt i can say that we should make our decision by uh, considering expert advice relevant data and analysis considering variety of options cost benefit analysis thank you sir i want to say something yes actually this is my first paper so i request you all for the suggestions okay this is your first paper Okay, nice presentation, Radhika. Okay. Thank you, sir. Okay, thank you, Radhika. Thank you, sir. Thank. You. Then next one is Ajay Kumar, Rajesh, and Ekta. Who is going to present? Paper ID seventy. Radhika, remove your slide. Radhika, yes, yes. Next one, Ajay Kumar, Rajesh Kumar, and Ekta. Who is going to present? Ekta Yadav is there. Yes. Sir, my paper ID is seventy-one. Okay. okay. Start, please. Ekta, you are not going to present. Okay. Is my screen is visible to you? Yes. Make it full screen. Okay, sir. Sure. Good evening, everyone present here. Today, I am honored to present our review paper that is the impact of technology adoption on production and human resource management. A review of empirical evidence. As uh, we know that in a world where technological advancements are shaping industries and economies, understanding the intricate relationship between technology adoption production processes and human resource management is very crucial technological advancements have dramatically transformed the way businesses operate so this paper dwells into the empirical um, evidences surrounding the effects of technology adoption on both production processes and human resource management and the aim is to provide a comprehensive overview of how organizations have navigated the challenges and opportunities presented by the technology integration ekta yes sir your slide is static kindly move it 
Sir, I'm moving my slide. Starting from the topic. Now it's visible. No, no, no. Still not. So now same situation is there. Okay, uh, explain the brief overview as well as uh, the main findings and conclusions. Yes, sir. Uh, the analysis of actual uh, data shows that uh, adopting new technology has a big impact on managing human resources and production processes uh, and the adoption of new technologies improves operational effectiveness, productivity and product quality while also optimizing a number of human resource processes like hiring, training and performance management. Uh, even uh, the linkage between the technology and production process and HRM practices need to be taken into account. Uh, and uh, overall, this uh, review highlights the transformative potential of technology adoption and underscores the importance of responsible and strategic integrations to unlock its full benefits for the organizations and their employees by embracing technology with careful consideration of challenges and effective strategies, organizations can position them, uh, themselves for sustainable success in the digital age. So uh, in conclusion, we can say that uh, the impact of technology adoption uh, on production and human resource management is very uh, important. So it's imper uh, imperative for organizations to leverage technology uh, strategically while taking in account its multiple uh, benefits. So by doing this, businesses can optimize their pro uh, production process, empower their workforce, and they can remain adaptable in this ever-changing technological landscape. So. Uh, this is the conclusion of my Ekta, uh, we are living in a social media driven world so uh, uh, how do you think uh, business organizations and particularly the hr departments uh, they are using social media uh, in their hr initiatives as well as recruitment and uh, other purposes can you give me a few examples uh, so uh, can you please repeat I want to know ki how do business organizations, particularly the HR department of uh, those organizations, use social media towards recruitment and uh, you can say training and uh, all of these HR related functions. Can social media be used in uh, recruitment and uh, other purposes? Sir, so, uh, yes, uh, we can say that they can post uh, their job, uh, like they can vacancies on linked and uh, there are so many websites that are working on this like nokri.com and uh, they can uh, post their jobs including their descriptions their requirements applications on facebook platforms twitter instagram so uh, yeah we can say that social media helps a lot and like uh, they can share their content also about their company's culture, their value, their work environment. That can help in creating a positive image of an uh, of a company. Okay, thank you very much. Next thank presenter you, is Parvinder Singh. Yes, sir. Yes. Arvinder? Yes, sir. I'm sharing this. Okay, okay. Is it visible? Yes, yes. Okay, sir. Not Thank you. Complete visit. Okay, sir. Good evening, all. My name is Parvinder Singh. I am going to present a research article entitled with Inventory Policy for Degrading Items under Advanced Payment with Price and Memory Sensitive Demand using Metaheuristic Techniques. Okay. These are the outlines of my 
presentation. First of all, I have used fractional calculus. So fractional calculus is a generalization of classical calculus method, which where the integer or a derivative offer a quick, quick shift in the output. Whereas the fractional derivative depend on every point in the concerned domain and fractional derivatives are appropriate for considering the memory effect. The author, Sadin and others have proposed that the fractional order derivatives index can be considered as a memory index. Also fractional calculus, we have two major definition. First is a riemann liouville fractional integral, which is given by equation number first, and then capital fractional derivatives, which is given by equation number two. As we have done in classical calculus, we can take the Laplace transform capital order, capital fractional order derivative, which is given in equation number three. And the Laplace transform of metag Leffler function can be given in equation number four, where metag Leffler function is defined by equation number five. So this is basic introduction of my model. So we have considered the deterioration effect and the preservation policy. This basic introduction is given in this slide. These are some relevant literature. So this is a comparison of studies by our study. In our study, we have included all the, we have covered all the gaps that are in the literature. The basic assumptions are we have considered a single deteriorating item which does not start uh, till the time mu and after that it degrades with a constant pace theta. We have used preservation investment to reduce the deterioration rate and the deteriorated unit, a portion of deteriorated units are sold at a discount rate. And Parvinder, uh, please conclude with your uh, uh, applications of study. Oh, okay, sir. So this is the mathematical model. We have derived an initial value problem for the concert dynamical system with the initial condition and use the Laplace transform to get the stock level. And uh, this is the diagram for deteriorated units. And we have calculated some inventory costs and revenues, sales revenue by using beta order fractional integral and holding cost, disposal cost and purchasing cost. This is the capital cost incurring with the advance payment and the, the retailer pays the advance payment in an equal sized installment and the interest code cost can be given by equation number 25. By combining all the cost and revenue, we can generate a average profit function, which is given in equation number 26. So to demonstrate numerically, we have taken an example. Demand function is considered as a linear decreasing function of price and preservation function. We have taken the cost parameter and other parameter are named as non-cost parameter and prepayment parameters. We have used meta heuristic approaches such as differential evolution, particle swarm optimization, and quantum behavior particle swarm optimization to solve the concerned optimization problem. And we use different parameter settings and analyzed it. These are the comparison of meta heuristic algorithm or by comparison, we have, these are the convergence graph for different set of alpha and beta. Your time is over. That would be enough, Parivinder. Thank you. Okay, sir. Thank you. Next is Suman Monga. Yes, sir. I'm here. Okay, okay. Paper ID is 80. Yes, sir. Okay. Should I start, sir? Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, a very good evening to all of uh, all of the uh, present here. The I am here to give my presentation on the topic impact of dividend announcement on stock prices in Indian corporate sector. The main purpose of my study is to determine the effect of dividend announcement on the stock return of the company listed at Bombay Stock Exchange.
20 companies of Indian corporate sector listed in Bombay Stock Exchange that declared dividend for the financial year 2020-21 uh, make up the sample of my study. And to fulfill the objective of the study, market model of event study methodology has been used. In market model, the abnormal return is calculated as a difference between the actual return and estimated return. The impact of dividend announcement on share price has been analyzed for the event window of 21 days and the estimation window of 100 days. The average abnormal return has been computed by taking the average of abnormal return for every day of the window period. It is revealed from the table that the day of annou dividend announcement has shown positive and insignificant abnormal return at 5% level of significance. Average abnormal return is a positive number on greater day during pre-announcement period. 70% of the companies show up was showed a positive abnormal return on the day of the announcement. It is also noteworthy that during the 21 days of the event window, there were 11 days where the average abnormal return was recorded as being positive. The findings of the analysis showed that it is more beneficial to purchase share on the announcement day and a few days before the announcement. All the figures of average abnormal return, whether positive or negative, are insignificant at 5% level of significance. Now, the cumulative average abnormal return around dividend announcement. To fully capture the result of an event analysis, uh, we use the cumulative average of normal return. In this table, the whole event window has divided into small size window as it is crucial for the investors to discover profitable prospects for their excess funds. It is revealed that all the windows have produced positive but insignificant results. The 11 day window has shown the highest cumulative average of normal return. As a, uh, so if the investor opt to buy the shares when the 11 day window, they will like to make a sizable profits. To conclude, by utilizing event study method, the study aims to document market responses to stock dividend choices in India in terms of stock prices and volume. Company experienced modest increase in average abnormal return as a result of the dividend announcement. This study can be expanded in the future to cover more topics like the effect of merger and acquisition, stock spills and stock repurchases, as well as how they affect the stock prices. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much. Next presenter is Seth Ali Khan. Yes, sir. So my screen is visible? No, not visible. Hello. Hello. Not visible. So is it visible now? No. So is it visible now? No. Yes, yes. Uh, good yes. evening, everybody. My, my name is Saif Ali Khan. I'm going to present a comparative study of trends for dengue outbreaks and mortality in India using different machine learning models. My table of content include introduction, literature review, methodology, result, conclusion, and references. Uh, as we know that dengue, a mosquito-borne viral disease, poses a significant public health challenges worldwide, uh, including in India. And this zoonotic disease spread from African uh, or uh, Asian non-human primates 500 to 1,000 years ago. In India, the incidence of dengue has been alarmingly high with millions of cases reportedly. Uh, we know that in the recent uh, times, various machine learning algorithms have been emerged as a powerful tool for analyzing and predicting the various aspects of infectious disease. So we are going to use these tools 
for our uh, trends analysis. In this study, we compared the different machine learning methods for predicting the dengue outbreaks using the different uh, machine learning algorithms and comparing it uh, by using the uh, mean squared error. And these, and these are the literature review where uh, where uh, various uh, authors have been used various machine learning algorithm for their disease. Sir, sir. Yes, sir. Screen is static. Move your slide, please. Keep on, uh, keep on moving your slides. Sir, so I'm moving my slide, sir. Okay, it is not moving on this screen. Yes, yes. Go ahead, please. Yes, sir. Uh, in methodology, uh, I, I have taken my data from the government website. Uh, the dengue cases uh, uh, are uh, are basically from the all the state and UTs from the India 2017 to 2020. I have used the Python library where I have used Seaborn, Matplotlib, or uh, the uh, auto decision, uh, decision trees random uh, forest regressor, and the mean squared error for my data analysis. Uh, where uh, ARIMA stands for autoregressive uh, integrated moving average and it is used in time series forecasting method. Decision trees is a versatile intuitive machine learning algorithm uh, used for both classification and regression task. Here I have used for regression purpose. Uh, random forest is also used for classification and regression task. I have used here for regression, uh, re re regression problem. And there is a gated recurrent unit. Uh, it, it is a type of a recurrent neural network architecture that is commonly used for various sequential data. Uh, it is also include, uh, includes the both classification and regression problem. So I have used for regression purpose. Uh, these are my results where I have shown uh, the Choropleth maps and bar graphs of dengue infected cases. And the choropleth clearly see, uh, show the heat map uh, throughout the time uh, from 2017 to 2022. And these, uh, these are for death cases. Uh, these two diagrams are showing the correlation matrix for infected and death cases, where uh, we see that in, the, uh, to, in year 2022 is uh, highly correlated with a year 2017 for infected cases or uh, in death cases the uh, year 2022 is highly correlated with uh, year 2020 these are uh, both are showing the moving average for dengue infected and death cases okay so, sir. Uh, sir, yes, sir please conclude how machine language uh, derived knowledge you can say scores over uh, traditional form of uh, research so, uh, we can use the uh, we can use the various machine learning, learning algorithm for uh, uh, to forecast the future data, uh, and these uh, machine learning algorithms are potentially have enough pot potential to uh, aid the protect measures and informing the policy makers for disease control and public uh, health planning, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much for this nice presentation. Next speaker is Esvaria. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, start the and complete within three minutes. Yes, sir. One minute. Uh, sir, I'm not uh, getting the option of uh, share my screen. Hello. Okay. What do you want to say? Uh, sir, I'm not able to share my screen. Uh, I didn't get that option. Sir, so, uh, one minute. Uh, let me try from my phone. Uh, can I share? Okay, okay, okay. Sir, am I audible? Oh, yes, yes. Okay, start this. Okay. 
सो टॉपिक माय टॉपिक इज सोल्यूशन ऑफ मल्टी ऑब्जेक्टिव सॉलिड ट्रेवलिंग सेल्समैन प्रॉब्लम विथ कार्बन कंस्टेंट बाय यूजिंग एस्पिरेशन लेवल बेस्ड मल्टी ऑब्जेक्टिव कॉसी अपोजिशनल जया अलगोरिदम दिस इज माय आउटलाइन सो बेसिकली ट्रेवलिंग सेल्समैन प्रॉब्लम इज अ सेल्समैन हैव टू ट्रेवल टू एवरी सिटी एंड रिटर्न टू द सिटी ही हैव स्टार्टेड सच दैट ही हैव टू मिनिमाइज द कॉस्ट डिस्टेंस टाइम फर्दर द प्रॉब्लम इज converted to multi objective and then multi objective solid so in multi objective solid is it get more than one mode of conveyance to travel from one city to another many uh, researcher have uh, solved uh, multi objective solid traveling salesman problem uh, in the literature uh, formulation for my my problem is um, here i have taken five objective cost time distance risk and emission and uh, further i had taken emission as a constraint so that uh, uh, any salesman cannot exceed its uh, carbon emission limit mm. this model shows that uh, suppose for c uh, it goes from xi to xi plus 1 by vi conveyance and uh, for the last show that uh, it have to return to the city he has started uh, this is my method that is al based moq or jaya in which initially i generate initial population and quasi population by using this equation 1.1 further uh, exponential membership uh, function is uh, used to calculate value of mu after that uh, the solutions are updated using equation 1.3 after that non dominating sorting and crowding distance are applied after that i get a list of solution and from that uh, the solutions which rank 1 are um, up, then equation 1.5 is applied to that solution and that satisfied the decision maker aspiration will be selected in the set of optimal solutions um the numerical illustration shows here uh, i have solved for tsp library data set for krok a100 b100 and c100 from the table we can see that uh, we get the better solution Uh, in two and three objective, and we get the optimal solution in single objective for ten thousand, twenty five thousand, and thirty thousand iteration. After further, I have solved uh, for ten cities for Surat uh, city. I had taken ten nodes, uh, and for which cost, time, uh, distance, risk, and carbon emissions are calculated. So from one, we can see that eight to ten from three. So we can we can say that we go to eight node to ten number node by using third number of conveyance, and so that we get this path. According to that, we get cost, time, risk, distance, and emission such that the emission does not exceed uh, by th three, two point seventy five and two point five. Um, the uh, uh, the uh, convergence we get at thirty uh, sixth uh, iteration. Um, here we can uh, we have plot it on google uh, google earth and we get the aspiration of uh, 0.96 0.92 0.96 0.93 and 0.98 <coughs> the red color is show for second conveyance the yellow color is show for first conveyance and the blue color is show for uh, the oh, okay okay sir we have then a solve for 50 nodes also for surat city and uh, we have plot this graph also uh after that we have uh, done the sensitivity analysis by restricting uh, the uh, each uh, each objective uh, by comparing our method with uh, uh, traditional cplex and hga uh, we get a multiple solution while uh, these both get a single solution so from multiple solution the decision maker can select whichever solution he want to select so in conclusion i can say that um, al based uh, moq jaya is applied on tsp library as well as 10 and 15 nodes of surat city and it is working efficiently for future work we can solve this problem under different environments okay, thank, thank you, you sir thank you thank the thank best presenter is kalendi dev kalendi dev along with palkin singh separate 89 sir please give me 10 minutes okay okay who is next डॉक्टर सुमन यू मे कंटिन्यू हेलो Yes, 
सचिन यादव से पूछ लो हेलो एवरीवन आई एम डॉक्टर सुमन देवी फ्रॉम महाराणा प्रताप कॉलेज ऑफ विमेन मंडीदावाली टुडे आई एम हियर टू प्रेजेंट माय स्टडी ऑन द टॉपिक ऑफ द पोस्ट कोविड 19 यूजेस ऑफ एम कॉमर्स ए ब्रीफ स्टडी ऑफ डिस्ट्रिक्ट सिरसा दैट हैज बीन कंडक्टेड विद द रिस्पोंडेंट ऑफ 50 मोबाइल कॉमर्स मींस एक्सचेंज ऑफ गुड्स ओवर द इंटरनेट बाय द यूज ऑफ मोबाइल फोन or mobile commerce it refers to the wireless electronic commerce used for conducting business through a wireless handy device like cellular phones or tablet it is known as next generation mobile commerce which enables users to access the internet without acquiring a place to plug in mobile commerce employ the web ready micro browsers in those mobile devices to surface through the internet anytime anywhere on the earth mobile commerce is the fast gaining prominence as it is very easy and convenient the increase in the flexibility and the power of wireless technology has ultimately been a uh, motivating factor for the growth of e-commerce in india there are around 700 million users of mobile users of mobile commerce in india the mobile commerce india in has been increased in the growing trend it is gaining acceptable among all the sec- sections of the society the growth can be traced back to the technology and demographic development that has influenced important aspect of the socio cultural behavior in the today's world the need for the mobility seems to be the primary uh, driving force behind m commerce applications of uh, like uh, mobile banking mobile shopping mobile internet and entertainments also the save lots of time which is the boon for the modern people who are so busy in their fast pacing life Uh, there are new trends reshaping the world mobile commerce is sometimes described as a wireless extension of the wide electronic commerce which is easily accessible anytime from anywhere the product and services like i am shopping i am ticketing mobile uh, mobile through the mobiles money transfers mobile banking mobile atm uses and the location based services etc are the factors that are uh, that are make uh, populous the mobile commerce in india the uh, objective of the study is to find out the impact of mobile commerce on the youth and the second objective of the study is to find out the problems and issues that are concerned with the mobile uses uh, in a district that is conducted in uh, specialized uh, specially sirsa to find out the growth rate of mobile commerce in this district and uh, also to understand the features of mobile commerce and the in last the objectives of this study is to uh, conduct the swot analysis Uh, that is conducted on the benefit and uh, the issues that are related with the uh, mobile commerce okay doctor uh, yes. but have we but have we in your major findings uh, the the work is still in progress it is concluded that more 100 uh, more than 400 times of mobile uses in the, in uh, mobile commerce uses has been increased in the district and the majority is used by the a uh, populations that hold the 50 between the age of 15 to 35 and the majority of uh, the gender that are included in this uh, study that is the, the male the work is still in progress sir okay thank you so much professor okay thank you thank you next speaker is kalindi now you are ready kalindi next next randeep ko थैंक यू सर इज माई स्क्रीन विजिबल सर यस यस द टॉपिक ऑफ माई प्रेजेंटेशन इज गुड इवनिंग एवरी वन द टॉपिक ऑफ माई प्रेजेंटेशन इज इफेक्ट ऑफ पी एन एफ एंड मेट ऑन लो बैक पेन विद टाइट हेमस्ट्रिंग्स इन फीमेल जिम गोर्स 
introduction pnf is full form uh, full form of PNF, pnf is proprioceptive neuromuscular facilitation stretching that has been demonstrated to increase both active and passive ranges of motion while also increasing muscle elasticity another another technique used to complement stretching is muscle energy technique it is developed by fred michel senior and fred uh, fred michel junior to treat the soft tissue move move stiff joints, stretch constructive muscles and fascia, elevate pain and enhance lymphatic drainage and circulation. This could be argued to be similar to PNF. These latter are activated during PNF and frequently take place to forces more than 25% of individuals maximum force. So the aim of the study is to examine the effect of PNF and MET on female gym goers in low back pain with tight hamstring muscles. The need of the study is many studies indicate that PNF and MET lengthen the hamstrings, builds the muscle and increases the strain range of motion of restrictive joints. So the significance of the study is to reduce pain, increase strength and improve the quality of life of female gym goers who are struggling with chronic back pain with tight hamstring muscles. Postural stability in females is provided by improving the muscle balance. The objective of the study are, is to uh, evaluate the effect of proprioceptive neuromuscular facilitation on low back pain, on balance improvement, strength, and muscle energy technique on low back pain, balance improvement, and strength. The methodology, it is an experimental study. The uh, 30 females were included in the study and the duration was three months. The outcome measures were pain, balance, and strength. Pain was uh, calculated by visual analog scale. And balance was measured Kalindi, by balance. balance. Kalindi, what has been your major findings? What key suggestions uh, would you like to give to female uh, gym goers based on your study findings? Sorry, sir, please pardon. I am asking what sort of suggestions would you like to make to female gym goers based on uh, uh, your research findings? Sir, uh, we will we will apply PNF techniques and uh, muscle energy techniques to them uh, to to reduce the how effective plasticity and to reduce the uh, uh, this would it be effective enough pain in the muscle. These are some exercises for group one. We have given proprioceptive neuromuscular facilitation stretching. And for group two, we have given muscle energy technique. So we can apply both and uh, to reduce the pain. Okay, these could be applied to uh, both genders, men and as well as women? Uh, yes, sir. Both For both we can apply. But uh, we have taken only female. Uh, we have included only females in this study. Okay, that is highly appreciated. Thank you. Uh, so the results uh, we have taken for uh, for data, we have taken the age, height, weight, and BMI body mass index and VAS visual analog scale P, uh, pre exercise and visual analog scale for post exercise and bel Berg balance scale pre and Berg balance scale post. We have taken the standard mean deviation, uh, standard deviation and mean uh, values. We have calculated the minimum and the maximum for both the uh, pre-readings, pre-exercise readings and the post-exercise reading to see the uh, difference, the to see the improvement. So uh, major improvement is seen. VAS is visual analog scale, which is a pain scale. So pre-scale uh, is shown here in is 5.13. And after that, the pain reduced to 0 0.9%. Uh, VAS scale, uh, uh, sorry, uh, the pre uh, pre reading was five point one and the uh, post three point five. So the pain reduced to two point five uh, uh, minimum two point five. Uh, the difference is two point five, and same goes with the Berg balance scale. Before it was forty five point one six, and later it was forty eight point six six. Okay, that would be enough. Thank you. Thank you. That would be enough, Kalindi. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir.
नेक्स्ट प्रेजेंटर इज रणदीप कौर रणदीप कौर पेपर आई डी नाइनटी नाइन जीरो नाइनटी रणदीप कौर इज नॉट हेयर देन नेक्स्ट इज जानवी जानवी प्राणव यस सर I am just presenting in a while. Next one, sir. Next one is the condition. Sir, it's showing you are not allowed to share screen. And go further with your mobile. No, no. Uh, wait. Now I think it is visible, right? Not visible. Not visible. Sir, is it visible now? No, no, no. Should we wait for some time? Okay. Now it is coming. Now it is visible. Please. Start. Okay. So, good evening, all of you present here. The topic for our paper is impact of influencer marketing. on consumers purchase intention as we have seen the increasing growth of these digital innovations information and explosions that are there in the advertisement and the social media platforms so we try to check about the influence of instagram on the purchase intentions of the consumers we all know that a literature is available but in the indian context if we talk about this topic not much of the studies has been conducted the research objectives of this study includes like increasing brand awareness may be ranked as the main objective of influencer marketing driver engagement with brands is regarded as the second goal of influencer marketing reaching new target audiences comes at the next as an objective of turning to influencer marketing generating authentic content about brands is also listed as an objective of influencer marketing so basically we, we would like to draw insights as to how instagram influencers create impact upon consumer buying behavior so the methodology used is empirical in nature basically the research design is exploratory and descriptive in nature the primary data has been collected using the and this guys structured in questionnaire the sampling technique that was used obviously it was basically related to probabilistic convenience sampling and our sample size was near about 350 respondents from delhi and ncr region it is being said by kerlinger that if you include the number of factors your sample size should be 10 times to it so basically our respondents were uh, required to be around 240 as of our 24 items variables and then the survey instrument the study employs the four items under the various constructs and it has been explored using the factor analysis just a minute yes so the study has been employed by 24 items and we have used the factor analysis for the same the reliability has been an analyzed by cronbach alpha measure the factor analysis and multiple regression has been conducted barlett test of sparsity has also been conducted for the same kmo that is kaiser melian oxygen measure has been adopted so this these are the data analysis and the result as it is visible that kmo is computed as 0.808 that indicates adequacy of sample to evaluate the perception of millennials towards instagram endorsed product we also have analyzed the barlett test of sparsity which says that if it is 0.000 it is considered to be good in the factor analysis we take about the six factor loadings the first factor was influencer attractiveness the second factor was value for money the third factor was consumer perception kalindi uh, please specify the type of products and or industries where this uh, instagram in influencers yes janvi janvi okay yes sir as okay. we have seen that these instagram influencers are using this in the cosmetic brands in the uh, fashion apparel industries all these brands and all these industries are moving towards the instagram influencers 
for promotion of their brand so basically influencer attractiveness the value of money the trustworthiness of influ influencer influencer exp uh, expertise brand attractiveness these all are the factor loadings our factor loadings came out to around 64.347 then we draw up some hypothesis which were based on these six factors then we applied the regression analysis the r square value comes out to be 0.558 and adjusted r square value was 0.547 so this r square which is 74.7 percent explains our correlation between the instagram influencers and as well as the okay janvi purchase intention janvi what would be the gender split among uh, these instagram influencers uh, how many would be females and how many would be males have you got any idea 100 percent to or you can say 50 50 percent or 80 20 percent uh, sir, it's near about 60-40%. 60% of the females and 40% of the males. 40% of the males you are speaking, uh, they would be advertising their uh, uh, cosmetics products. No, sir. It could be fashion apparels too. Basically, our okay. study was related to that, that Instagram influencers, kya hamare consumers ko attract kar paate hain based on six various factors, ki uski expertise kitni hai, uski value, lo, uski trustworthiness kitni hai, ब्रांड की अट्रैक्टिवनेस की वजह से लोग परचेज कर रहे हैं या हमारे इंस्टाग्राम इन्फ्लुएंसर्स की पॉपुलैरिटी की वजह से परचेज कर रहे हैं ओके दे वुड बी एबल टू बिल्ड द ब्रांड बट वुड दे बी एबल टू इन्फ्लुएंस सेल्स यस सर एज वी हैव सीन वेरियस इंस्टाग्राम इन्फ्लुएंसर्स इफ वी टॉक अबाउट अ फेमस गर्ल ऑफ दिल्ली रीजन इट्स कृतिका खुराना शी इज वेरी इन्फ्लुएंसिंग फॉर दी गर्ल्स एज वेल एज दी बॉयज द स्किन केयर रूटीन दैट शी फॉलोज एवरीवन इज going to follow her routine and they are influenced by his or her choice of the, the products that he, they use so do you find a, a particular uh, demographic uh, segment which is you can say most uh, uh, influenced by these uh, influencers any age group particular age group as well as gender yes sir. basically our study was conducted basically on the millennials so well, the millennials are more inclined millennials and gen z's are more inclined toward these instagram influencers if we talk about the persons of uh, 40 45 age they are not more inclined towards those but the millennials the people of age group starting from 15 to 30 32 are inclined towards these influ instagram influencers so that what they are using in their day to day routine so they are influenced by those products okay janvi uh, there there are time constraints and your um, study has been very interesting thank you so much professor okay sir thank thank you sir thank you sir. next okay. next paper id is 93 which is shared by four person kandisha shivam sarita amar who is going to present sir kandisha here i am here to present okay okay be a little faster Condition. Sir, uh, so I hope my screen is visible. Yes, yes, yes. It is visible. Please start with your objectives, then your methods, and then results. Uh, so, sir, this is a review paper titled as Cyber Crimes Prevention Using Artificial Intelligence and Analysis. So, through this review paper, we have tried to explore how cyber crimes started to emerge from the beginning how AI became the source of cyber crimes, and furthermore, AI only became the solution to prevent these cyber crimes. Through this review, we found that the cause of cyber crime, that is AI with the help of its, its tools, like machine learning, data mining, automation, can become assets to prevent cyber attacks. This genre is critical to consider as it has become an international issue. There are a series of cyber crimes that happen to attack systems of opponent countries, naming them as cyber wars. To conduct this literature survey, a total of 32 references have been used. So how AI is the cause of cyber crimes? AI made our lives easier and better. However, AI development is highly dependent on the data. Learning in machines is based on deep learning models, and each has their own precision and process. AI enables cyber attacks because as it develops, more data is needed. Hence, as the data is increasing, cyber attacks are increasing too. 
AI systems are in fact vulnerable to cyber attacks. This happens because AI has limitations that could be malicious and open a door for cyber crimes. While we discussed about how AI is a cause for cyber crime, over time we realized how AI can rather be used to protect ourselves. For example, AI plays a major role in the security of cyber physical systems as it works to find drawbacks in the communication network. These systems work on huge data and this transfer of data is made secure using AI as it is programmed to detect many malicious activity. Automated techniques are required to keep up with the scope of attacks worldwide, hence AI can be beneficial. So what is the future scope? So advanced persistent threat, quoted as APT, is virtually undetectable by current available tools. And cyber criminals have mastered the art of dodging even the most complex techniques like IDPS. Fortunately, the use of AI technology may boost IDPS systems detection rate and machine learning algorithms can mine data to identify various APT assault stages. To conclude, cybersecurity and AI work side by side to give a secured environment for work to the user in the internet world. It was realized that AI is the ultimate source for preventing cyber crimes. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, Kandisha. The next speaker is Ritu Saran. Ritu. Yes, sir. Okay, start now and complete within three minutes. My screen is visible, sir. No. Uh, should we come back to you again after five minutes? I'm sharing my screen, sir. Okay, okay. Be a little faster. Not able to share my screen, sir. Okay. Okay. Uh, you come back after five minutes. You try after okay. five minutes. Okay. Next is Hina. Hina Ancha. Anyone up here? Yes. Yes, please start. Let me share the screen, sir. Okay, okay. Next speaker, be ready, please. Kalindi. Kalindi, you are sharing one more paper. You want to present more, more paper? Achal, are you ready? Uh, yes, sir. Please go ahead. Is my screen visible, sir? No, no, no. Yes. Okay. Is it moving, sir? Yes, yes, yes. yes. Okay. Uh, respected dignitaries and all the members present here, good evening to all of you. The topic for the presentation is linking employer branding dimensions and organizational commitment, testing the mediating role of employee engagement. Let me directly start with the objectives of the study. The study filled the research gap by examining the influence of employer branding dimensions on organizational commitment. Second objective of the study is to investigate the indirect role of employer branding and commitment through the mediating mechanism of employee engagement. 
to achieve the ob objectives following hypotheses have been developed seven hypotheses regarding the employer brand dimensions and the organizational commitment relationship have been developed and the second hypothesis is regarding the mediating impact of employee engagement between branding and organizational commitment to achieve the purpose of the study permanent working employees from sbi bank located in the punjab and chandigarh region have been collected convenience and snowball sampling procedure procedures have been adopted for this purpose the results of the uh, objectives reveal that reputation value economic value social value diversity value ethical and csr values and work life values they are positively related to organizational commitment whereas the development value is not linked with the organizational commitment the second objective result shows that employee engagement partially mediates the relationship between employer branding and organizational commitment these findings suggest that employees appreciate the favorable employer branding dimensions such as positive reputation job security compensation packages supportive workplace environment task diversity workplace diversity work life balance and responsibility towards the society and they reciprocate by showing emotional commitment towards their organization the results reflect the development value doesn't predict or uh, doesn't predict organizational commitment in line with the previous research this is perhaps due to the fact that there is a mismatch between training and development and the personal growth of the employee the results indicate a significant mediating role that shows that employees receiving organizational inducements in the form of employer branding they are able to gratify their needs which motivates them to be engaged in their jobs and concomitant organizational commitment the study has the various theoretical and practical implications the theoretical implication is that the relationship of the employer branding dimensions and organizational commitment is the novelty and the motivation behind this whole research further few studies have examined the role mediating role of employee engagement practical implications can also be drawn from the study employer branding attributes plays a significant role in the organizational commitment of employees so it is pertinent for organizations to create supportive organizational practices to foster an atmosphere that enhances employee engagement and improves their commitment toward the organization study has few limitations study based on cross sectional research design so causal relationships can't be fixed the data collected through the self reported questionnaires so common method bias can be there further from a particular region the data has been collected which might limit the generalizability so future studies can consider the wider geographical areas further other employer employee attitude and other uh, uh, you name few uh, industries where uh the employees value uh, their uh, employer branding or the organization themselves are investing towards uh, making their brand much more well known and accept acceptable in the industry uh, sir the most of the uh, the it sector they are uh, applying the industry. i i want to ask uh, apart from it sector Which Apart is, from IT sector, so actually I have taken the State Bank of India from the public sector bank. They are uh, using this employer branding technique. That's why I have taken up this sector. Apart from the SBI Bank, the HDFC, ICICI, they are also focusing on this uh, employer branding techniques. Further, the MSMEs, the small scale, uh, the business surveys are there regularly, and in the business survey, the employer branding reports great place to. Uh, work. These are the certain indexes and companies take parts in there. Okay, would uh, uh, this employer branding be based largely on the size, or you can say uh, the dominance of the uh, business organization, or you can say uh, other parameters like uh, you can say uh, giving benefits and uh, welfare schemes and uh, other such uh, you can say amenities provided to the employees. Mm, pardon sir i didn't get the question properly i want to ask you how uh, how do employees uh, you can say measure or they would identify ki uh, uh, this particular em employer has got value uh, you can say better than their uh, competitors but what, what would be the parameters sir these employer branding dimensions are the parameter 
yes the employee are giving their perceptions about the various values provided to them through their employer just like reputation value the image of the organization among the customers among the employees social values how the organization is providing the team spirit in the organization social values supportive workplace environment economic values compensation packages job security ethical and csr values how the organization is contributing toward the society development value how the organization is helping them in the training and development how the organization is providing the promotional facilities to their employees further work life values that actually shows how the whether the employee employers they are able to maintain they are able to provide the work life balance to their employees or not uh, diversity value in the form of task diversity or cultural diversity whether employees they are not discriminating against men and women and what kind of assignments they are providing to their employees so these various values values reflect an organizational inducements or employer efforts towards their employees extremely well researched acham thank you so much thank you sir thank you <clears throat> next presenter is kalinde kalinde and palke they prayed in 98 kalinde you are sharing the second paper <laughs> <laughs> the next one is <coughs> Shivendra Pratap Singh. Yes, sir. Excuse me, sir. Sir, excuse me, sir. Yes. Sir, I am Sachin Yadav from JJ University. Sir, my internet is 90 percent used. Okay, can I first do the paper yes, presentation, yes, sir? Oh, yes. Go ahead, Sachin. Thank you, sir. Sachin, how much time would you take? Shall I present, sir? Ritu Saran. Wait for some time. Wait for two minutes. Sachin, are you ready? Yes. Please go ahead. Sachin, you are mute. Sir, screen sharing is done. Uh, okay, yes, yes, yes. Sachin, uh, please share with us your important findings. Objectives. Sir, my topic is perception of health and wellness among university college students. My methodology: study design is a survey. Time of study is four weeks, and my total subjects are seven zero one. Selection criteria is. Age seventeen to thirty years, and inclusion criteria both male and female, post graduation and under graduation students, all university and college students are. Exclusion criteria are age above thirty years, other than students or employees, uncooperative participants. Sir, my procedure is online mode. Through online mode, it's a survey. Sir, sample paper were selected from both press. post graduation and under graduation students okay. through various university and colleges sir participants were communicated and uh, explained about uh, please share your major findings yes sir my okay. results are some yeah. on the physical and psychological parameters sir total okay. 701 students fill completely online survey form in which somatic mild pain is 17 sir i will share my table okay Somatic pain is seventeen point three percent is mild and moderate is eleven percent. Severe is four percent. Restlessness twenty five point two percent. Moderate fifteen point four percent and severe is six percent. Gastrointestinal symptoms are seventeen point five percent. Moderate nine point one percent and severe is two percent. 
respiratory symptoms are 12.1 percent are mild moderate are three point yes sir sachin we are interested in knowing what are the reasons behind these ailments reasons behind what are the type of psychological or you can say social problems these students are facing that are resulting into uh, these sort of problems what are the reasons behind due to study and the interaction between teachers and students sir the modern education system is also responsible for that okay what sort of remedies would you suggest to these students so as to alleviate their pain sir for each and everything jaise for example sir eating is well and fruits vegetables nuts for regular exercises finding sport for family environment and friends also helpful hot pack and cold pack are also and strength of the study is large sample size online mode college university to going students main population further scope sir we can add more physical and psychological problems just like depression musculoskeletal condition in future the study can be also be done in school going students also sir we will must do it in professional search rest than this conclusion of my study is the survey concluded that the students were affected by physically 17% of somatic pain 25% of restlessness 12% of respiratory problems 36% of tiredness and 18% of insomnia the survey also concluded that students among university college were affected psychologically 27.4% of loss of con consciousness 31% of anxious mood and 27.5% of tension sir thank you sir okay okay sir next one is are you now ready you are ready yes sir i am ready yes My screen is visible, sir. Yes, yes. Good afternoon, sir. Myself, Ritu Saharan. I am a research scholar under the supervision of Dr. Naveen Kumar in Chandigarh University, Gherua. So my uh, title of the paper is Modified Picardman Hybrid Iterative Process and Its Convergence Analysis. In this paper, we have modified the Picard-Mann hybrid iterative process, which is previously introduced by S. H. Khan in 2013. it converges faster than the previously introduced iterative method ritu skip this only show your work okay sir so these are uh, some iteration methods given by picard man ishikawa noor and some hybrid iterative processes picard man picard ishikawa picard noor uh, our process this is our process i have introduced this xn plus 1 is equal to f square yn and yn is equal to 1 minus an xn plus an f of xn where an is a real sequence in the open interval 0 to 1 we have uh, uh, proved convergence and stability analysis and fast convergence for our process so this is first theorem which uh, Uh, is f from a to a a function on a if f satisfies one that is contraction uh, principle yes sir uh ritu uh, what are your major findings the applications of your uh, research sir our procedure is a fast converging iterative process from previously introduced iterative processes i will show you the main table so this example we have used function we have used is x plus 24 raised to power 1 by 3 initial value we have taken is 20 and uh, the value for uh, a n b n and c n is uh, half so this is the main table showing our result our process uh, in the Uh, first it uh, converges on seventh iteration then picard process it converges on 13 man and ishikawa processes these uh, uh, converges on 59 to 60 iterations then picard man it is converges on 11th and same picard noor uh, hybrid iterative process 
it also converges on 11th iterations to conclude your uh, research so we have uh, proved the theorems these are the theorems included in our paper theorem one we have proved for convergence of uh, the fixed point and second theorem we have uh, proved for uh, stability of the process and third this theorem we have proved for convergence of uh, the process faster than the previously introduced processes okay so uh, that would be enough thank you so much next one is please thank you sivender pratap singh yes sir Okay, start now and complete within three minutes. Sure, sure. Screen is visible. Sir, my screen is visible. Okay, okay. Good evening, all of you. Uh, Today my uh, title is New Proposed Length Wise Weighted Inverse Relay Distribution with their application on real data along with its stochastic comparison. These are the contents of my presentations. Uh, when there is a lack of experiment and repetition and randomization in the space of observation, in this case we use weighted distributions. Pissers firstly introduce weighted distribution. After that, Rao proposed distribution weighted distribution new form this is the form of new new weighted distribution where omega is uh, integration of uh, wx fx dx and wx uh, is unit non negative weighted function which is exceed unity when we replace wx by x the uh, length of unit then we get a special case of uh, weighted distribution called size based or length wise form of weighted distribution these are some literatures uh, this is my uh, proposed distribution which we find from uh, inverse relay distribution whose pdf is this we use equation 1 to get new new proposed distribution and pdf of my distribution is this chandar would you uh, share the practical application of your study yes sir sir uh, this this is the hazarded function of my pdf uh, distribution which is upside down uh, upside down and this is the characteristics of distributions as mean variance and coefficient of variations this is the mle and the stochastic comparison so we uh, we fitted the r model in uh, blooded cancer data okay sir yes sir we get it we are uh, running short on uh, short on time so uh, so that would be enough thank you so much okay. thank you sir next is sakshi yes sir Be a little brief, Sakshi. Sure, sir. Excuse me, sir. My number was ninety-eight. When okay. can I present? After Sakshi. Yeah, I'm not a Sakwa. Ah, uh, sir, is my screen is visible? Yes. 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 Please go ahead. Yes, sir. Ah, uh, so I'm presenting this paper along with my supervisor, Dr. Meena Sharma. Uh, so the topic is uh, do business strategies reduce probability of default a firm needs business strategy to gain competitive advantage and outperform its competitors porter states that firms outperformance is achieved primarily to, through two types of competitive advantage one Sakshi, is can you, please, Sakshi, can you please show your research work yes sir skip this uh, interview so, uh, so can i show the research graph 
business strategy measures have not been applied to uh, measure uh, corporate failure that whether they can contribute to uh, mitigate corporate failure or not so this is the research gap so based on that this is the uh, this, these are the hypothesis that co leadership will reduce the default risk similarly differentiation strategy will also reduce the probability of default so this a paper aims to examine the impact of generic business strategies that is co leadership and differentiation on default risk so this this is my research design so sample has been uh, uh, taken from provis and uh, from the known financial firms for 275 companies these 275 companies have been taken from the six industries that have been in the defaulting state over the last 34 years so Uh, the panel uh, we have applied panel data for this so data set consists of 2750 panel observations for 275 companies and for te- for the period 2013 to 2022 so this composed my sample uh, so dependent variable is measured through altman z score and dependent variable strategies have been measured through uh, cost leadership is measured through asset turnover of operation and differentiation through profit margin so these are the control variables of my study size liquidity leverage and flows so this is the panel data regression and it is that we have applied on 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 our results so desired score is measuring default risk or financial stability these right hand side constitutes my independent as well as control variables so these are this constitutes the results of the study first the descriptive strategies i will directly uh, come up to the uh, 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 direct impact of business strategy on default risk so both cost leadership and depreciation have positive relationship with z score as well as the robustness measure z score 1995b which indicates that better the execution of generic strategies the higher will be the financial stability so the findings favor the hypothesis that business strategies reduce the default risk of the company and the results are in the fi- are in line with the findings of agassi and brand so the, uh, the results of robustness checks are also provided in table 6 so we can see that old independent and control variables are significantly associated with altman z score that is the robustness measure so this is this table is presenting my results so p value is significant for all the uh, independent variables this success okay okay yes, so that would be enough thank you so much okay sir thank you ralinde Yes, sir. Shall I present? Ah, yes. Present here. Is my screen is visible? Yes, yes. Try to finish within time. The topic of my presentation is effect of muscle energy technique with diaphragm release technique on respiratory parameters and cranial vertebral angle in forward head posture. Ideal posture is a state of preserving the body. So uh, the study design was randomized control trial. The study duration was two weeks. and the sample size was 60 subjects were taken with convenience random sampling inclusion criteria was uh, cranio vertebral angle less than 49.9 degree subjects were taken and subjects were included 20 to 35 years of old kalindi uh, kalindi uh, kalindi let us skip the nitty gritty let us come to the insights that your study uh, you can say uh, that you would be able to sh- share with us what fresh insights uh, and uh, you can say findings uh, that uh, you think that should be shared with us yes sir uh, for forward head posture uh, for to improve the angle of forward head posture we have uh, given okay. some exercises deep, to deep flexor nus- muscles and to other muscles and we have uh, taken this data the intervention we have made the two groups intervention and control group for intervention uh, group we have the mean value of 22.9 and uh, post mean value was uh, post exercise was 3.2 means there was an improvement so this was the uh, cranio vertebral angle measure uh, measurement and the improvement is seen in the graphs then uh, this is the peak flow respiratory uh, rate peak flow uh, respiratory rate of mus- uh, lungs was uh, 
measured and force volume capacity of the lungs axillary chest expansion the foist chest expansion and the uh, this is these are the readings of intervention group neck uh, neck disability index craniovertebral angle peak flow rate force vital capacity flow expiratory volume in 1 second chest expansion axillary chest expansion at zygoid process and chest expansion at abdominal level so it can be concluded that the application of muscle energy technique with diaphragm release technique on muscles of myokinetic chain statistically improved the craniovertebral angle neck stability index and respiratory parameters in forward head posture thank okay. you thank you kalindi thank you next one is rahul shukla bhaiyan sir okay be a little brief rahul So can I start? Yes, yes. Good evening, everyone. My name is Rahul Shukla. I am a research scholar at Department of Statistics, BVU, Lucknow. Uh, the title of my research paper is "Inferences on uh, R is Equal to P Probability X is Less Than Y Based on the Rank Set Sampling Data in Case of a Nagarami Distribution." These are the content of my research paper. Uh, first i like to introduce the research paper uh, here there are three main theories uh, the first theory is the reliability theory in reliability theory we have basically two models uh, the first one is the reliability model which is rt is equal to probability x is greater than t where x is the random variable which represents the lifetime of an item or a system and the second model is the r is equal to probability x is less than y where x is the uh, random stress where y is strength of a item or a machine and the second theory which we include as this is, it is distribution theory here we consider the nagarami distribution which was first introduced in 1960s and the third one is the sampling theory here we consider the rank stress sampling which was introduced by mcclintis in 2005 and it is more efficient than other uh, traditional simple random sampling Uh, this is the re short Rahul, uh, review of Rahul. Uh, uh, skip to the conclusion part. Conclusion. Uh, sir, the for the main conclusion of my research is that uh, this is the likelihood function which was not estimated before. Uh, by using this uh, likelihood equation, we can uh, uh, estimate the parameters of this distribution, which can be used in other fields uh, like medical fields and the lifetime. or uh, to, to measure the lifetime of any machine or item uh, the second one is sir um, to measure the reliability of any machine we have this model uh, reliability r is equal to probability y is less than x here we consider the rank set sampling which is efficient than simple random sampling as we know so we also uh, derive the likelihood function for in case of uh, rank set sampling which is gives the more reliable result than simple random sampling and by using this technique we can efficiently estimate the reliability of a machine so these are the main equation which we derive so these are the references okay thank, thank you sir. thank you raul next one is uh, sir next one shikha goyal shikha is here Yes. Then next one is Anuj Kumar. Next, Khushbu Dalal. Khushbu Dalal. Yes, sir. Okay, start your presentation. Yes, sir. to delve into the critical role of human resource management in fostering sustainable development within the agriculture sector 
and the key focus is on the HRM practices. This study aims to explore the impact on agricultural productivity, innovation, and the overall well-being of the workforce. Uh, we are going to deal with interplay between HRM and development by investigating the intricate interplay between the human capital management and the agricultural process. This research contributes to the deeper understanding of uh, the sector's sustainable growth. Now, addressing the research gap, the research aims to address the scarcity of scientific exploration and practical implementation of HRM within the agribusiness sector. Scope and structure. Uh, this Can you please show your findings? Yes, sir. In the research methodology, we will uh, do data collection, how we are doing the data collection. And uh, 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 here we are showing the sampling techniques, uh, like uh, we are applying stratified sampling, random sampling, representative sample, enhancing validity. Now coming to the conclusion part in the data findings, uh, we'll find out that HRM enhances productivity. Effective HRM practices significantly enhance agricultural productivity through skill development, training, and performance incentives. Fostering innovation, HRM also promotes a culture of innovation by empowering employees and encouraging creativity and collaboration. Building resilience, it also contributes to creating a resilient and adaptable agricultural workforce which is capable of na navigating challenges, enhances the well-being of uh, employees, which leads to increased job satisfaction and quality of life. And then based on research insights, propose actionable recommendations for policymakers, institutions, and HR professionals. Strategic tailoring, de develop HRM practices tailored to the specific needs of different agriculture subsectors. Then promotes investment in education, training, and support system for employee development, encouraging innovative practices that drive continuous improvement and technological advancements, advocate for HRM strategies that align with broader agriculture development objectives for sustainable growth. HRM's crucial role is pivotal for addressing challenges and driving sustainable growth in agriculture sector. Uh, it enhances, we, uh, through our findings, we saw that it enhances productivity, fosters innovation, and it contributes to competitive advantage. It also builds a resilient and adaptable agricultural workforce capable of overcoming uncertainties. Prioritizing, it looks into the well-being of employees. Prioritizing, if you are prioritizing employees' well-being, this improves job satisfaction and quality of life of agricultural workers. Tailored HRM strategies, investments in education, incentivizing innovation are key for long-term sustainability. Future studies should uh, explore diverse agriculture contexts and conduct comparative analysis for deeper insights. Successful HRM implementation requires collaboration between policymakers, institutions, and HR professionals. HRM also shapes the trajectory of agriculture development, ensuring a prosperous and sustainable future. Uh, addressing research gaps highlight the need for future research to explore HRM practices in diverse agricultural contexts, including smaller, smallholder farming and agro industries. They should be comp uh, the comparative studies they suggest conducting uh, across different countries, regions to examine the context specificity, uh, specificity of HRM strategies in various varying agriculture systems. Continuous improvement in the ongoing research and innovation to refine HRM practices and con which contributes to improvement in the sector. Re reiterate the significance of HRM in shaping the future of agriculture, fostering sustainable development and ensuring a prosperous and resilient sector. Thank you, sir. Okay, thank you. Sir, uh, sir I am presenting research paper, Anuj Kumar. Okay, go ahead. Your paper ID is... Yes. What is your paper ID, Anuj? Yes, yes. Paper ID, Anuj. Yes. Paper ID, 
एप्लीकेशन ऑफ गुरु मैथड ऑफ गुरु मैथड ऑफ डाटा हैंडलिंग मॉडलिंग फॉर द फ्यूचर प्रोडिक्शन इन बर्थ रेट इन केस स्टडी इन इंडिया इंडिया तो आउटलाइन इंट्रोडक्शन रिसर्च मैथोलॉजी रिजल्ट एंड डिस्कशन एंड कंक्लूजन एंड रेफरेंसेस एब्स्ट्रैक्ट द प्रेजेंटिंग एब्स्ट्रैक्ट इन इन कंपेयरिंग यस यस सर ओनली शेयर द रिजल्ट एंड कंक्लूजन पार्ट ओके सर ओके सर रिजल्ट मैथोलॉजी सर रिजल्ट एंड डिस्कशन रिजल्ट इज इज ए कंपेरिजन कंपेरिजन फॉर एक्यूरेसी मेजरमेंट एमएससी एमएससी आरएमएससी एमएई एंड एमएई एमएपी एंड आर स्क्वायर इन इन बेटर देन द ऑल ऑल टाइम सीरीज मॉडल इन जीएमडीएस मॉडल इज बेटर देन द कंपेरिजन अदर मॉडल्स देन द प्रेडिक्टिव रिजल्ट फॉर बेटर देन द अदर टाइम सीरीज मॉडल like that am model holds arima and and ar models these better result for that gmdh ann and future prediction for better in comparison to several time series models and conclusion the result the research so that it predictive the birth rate in india gmdh best more accurate in comparison to model am model holds arima and and ar models in comparison to others models gmds is the best and the others models references and okay uh, thank you thank you sir next speaker is indu indu kumari next indu Indu, Minakshi. Yes, sir. I'm here. Okay, start your presentation and uh, try to finish uh, within the time framework of three minutes. Okay, sure, sir. So your Is results, my... results and uh, conclusion part. Conclusion part. Is my screen visible, sir? Yes, yes. Okay, sir. First of all, I will be introducing introduction part. This paper proposes no, no, machine. No. Skip to the results as well as conclusion part only. Okay, sure, sir. Sir, uh, result and analysis part is shown here. General utilized network models are LNET, LXNET, V double G NET. The relationship between classification accuracy and number of model iterations is shown by given table. The number of iterations are given and recognition accuracy is given as per the three given models. This model is also represented by a diagram, which is shown here with given percentage. The orange color shows recognition accuracy unit, shows recognition accuracy LX net, and pink shows recognition accuracy B double net. Then evolution of models predicted and actual performances is also given is also shown by table. Train optimization is two point three percent. Train no optimization is two point six. Test optimization is four point two. Test no optimization is five point three. Optimization accuracy is also shown by pie diagram. Conclusion: In this presentation, we dismantle the focal speculation brain networks to figure out the few sorts of convolution brain organization and their applications to picture grouping. At last, tests were utilized to look at the exactness of various famous organization models utilized for picture arrangement. The discoveries showed that the recommended model had higher classification exactness than different models. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Manakshi. Next speaker is Devya. Good evening, sir. Okay, okay. Start your presentation. Yes. Sir. Is the screen visible, sir? Yes, yes. Okay. It's about the uh, wireless sensor network, and we have to monitor which routing protocol uh, works best in the harsh condition where wireless sensor network works. Okay. So uh, the basic idea of wireless sensor network is that it takes the data from the environment and 
wireless session uh, divya and, can you please show your uh, research yeah, yeah. methodology yeah yeah yes sir we are taking a comparison of two protocols basically and these protocols are prrp and clrp right. position responsive routing protocol and cluster based energy efficient location routing protocol so uh, during comparison it is drawn that the clrp protocol have some drawbacks that it follows the uh, property of greedy algorithm and flooding flooding technology so uh, the basic problem here arises that the uh, energy uh, it is not energy efficient it takes so very much uh, lowest and it drained its energy during the flooding uh, process which it follows so a novel process uh, that is the another prrp process that routing protocol uh, it take it is uh, the efficient protocol in comparison to the other protocol and this table shows the results in comparison is this table visible sir yes yes so so the th throughput of both the protocols are uh, compared on three scenarios one data transmit period five data transmission period and 10 data transmission period and the result shows that the uh, prrb protocol is ba uh, much better and faster uh, in comparison to clrp protocol in terms of throughput and energy efficiency so the con concluding part is that we propose that prrp protocol is best in the harsh condition of wireless sensor networks where uh, there is uh, we uh, we have low power or energy consumption is needed this is the conclusion sir. thank you thank you diva thank you thank you next presenter is meher and riyad yes sir yes sir i am here i am on the okay okay Oh, is it feasible? Yes, yes. Please continue. Okay. Sir. Okay, sir. So, Derek, I will uh, just start with the uh, finding and go to the conclusion. So, I will just start with the challenge to see yeah, to the station with the accounting and auditing. First of all, uh, data integrated and availability, cost and skills. For that first one, blockchain technology is designed to be sensor proof, but uh, there have been some concerns about the integrity of the data blockchain platform. This could be uh, make it difficult for the accounting and the state to uh, concentrate the uh, data on blockchain. Available blockchain technology is still it's early stage of development and it's not yet clear how to will be audited. This could make it difficult for the accounts, accountant uh, and auditor to ensure that the blockchain tra uh, transactions are secure Mahir, and complement with the uh, Mahir, can you, uh, can, can you discuss your uh, findings? Yes, sir. So, so, sir, the cost, so uh, regarding with the cost, the cost of uh, implementing blockchain technology can be high, uh, especially for the uh, small business. This could make it difficult for some businesses to adopt blockchain technology skills. Uh, uh, this challenge, which can be faced with the account and audit, uh, account, accountant and the auditor will, will need to develop new skills in order to work with the blockchain technology. This could be a challenge as there is currently a, a, a short reach of the skilled blockchain professional. I'll go to the conclusion. Regarding with the conclusion, development of, sorry, uh, not, not of this is. Go to the conclusion. The conclusion, the development of blockchain technology has a implementation for the tax law. Some countries have already imposed tax on the blockchain activities and operations, the tax uh, treatment of cryptocurrency varies from the country to country. Audio. Thank you, Mahir. Yes, sir. Thank you. It's concluded. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker is Savita Gupta.
then nilambra nilambra Sakti. yes sir just sir presenting just a moment okay, okay go ahead uh, good evening all uh, the, uh, my uh, topic is organization support and engagement of women employees in it sector with reference to delhi ncr and this is under the supervision of dr nilambra shivastav and i'm presenting on behalf of uh, her and the co-author gaurav kumar so basically i'm coming to the uh, directly to the confusion uh, findings in the confusion part yeah, sure sure yeah so coming to my findings as you uh, like according to the data there is a significant positive association between organizational support and employee engagement with respondents reporting higher level of engagement um, in the organizations and the mean score was by female it employees so it plays a higher priority on work life balance and organization support as well and coming to the confusion i can say that when women feel supported by their organization it has a positive impact on their overall engagement so a relationship typically works on improved job satisfaction higher commitment levels increased motivation etc and also this study emphasized the importance of both tangible and intangible employee engagement and involvement of them in the organizations so yeah thank you so much okay nima uh, uh, why yeah. did you choose uh, only women why didn't you include the men folk do you think that uh, women are being uh, discriminated in it sector uh so basically i uh, not a, uh, it's, a, it's not about discrimination but uh, yes there are some organizations in which there is no equal priorities given like in some we have equal priorities like ibm has some flexible mentorship programs microsoft soft has leap uh, program for women so nowadays uh, it's emerging like women are taking equal participation so i thought of working on the women okay, school very enough thank you yeah thank you next is satsi साक्षी पेपर आईडी 140 परमिंदर कौर एंड हीना पेपर आईडी 142 यस yes, आई एम हियर यस परमिंदर गो एट प्लीज यस Sir, is it visible? <laughs> yes, yes, visible. Okay. 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 Okay.
next one is environment transformational leadership so leader, leader plays an important role to influence the behavior of employees environment transformation leadership also plays an important role to environment in behavior in public and private or which means the next जीत सिंह पेपर आई टी वन फोर्टी नाइन नेक्स्ट इज अंजलि गुप्ता पेपर आई टी वन फिफ्टी थ्री हेलो सर गुड इवनिंग आई विल बी प्रेजेंटिंग Anjali, hurry up. Be a little faster. Hello, uh, my name is Anjali Gupta, and my topic for presentation is an imperfect production system with flex fuel machine and environment sustainability. These are the highlights of my paper. Uh, these are the objective. The total. Uh, the objective of the study is to derive total profit by jointly optimizing the production rate, selling price, production time, and considering the effect of carbon carbon emission uh, with the flexible production rate. numerical analysis and sensitivity analysis is presented for this model these are some notations okay skip to the, ma uh, the major conclusions what are your okay, major okay, conclusions sir. findings yes sir Uh, here we did the uh, sensitivity analysis for the model where we see the what impact it it done on the model on the total profit if we are changing the parameters uh, uh, my major finding is like uh, nowadays uh, the carbon emission is much more in the manufacturing industry so we are trying to cooperate flex fuel machinery in the uh, production system so that the we can control the carbon emission here we uh, i have done the comparison between flex fuel machinery and gasoline based machinery and we can see even uh, if there is no change in production other parameters the carbon emission produced by the gasoline machinery is much more than the flex fuel machinery which impact the total cost at it increases and having the negative impact on total profit and since our uh, demand is sense uh, demand is price sensitive people also consider the fact that if the product will be too pricey they won't consider it and nowadays people are more uh, towards the eco friendly products so they take into the account that the product they are buying they are harming the environment or not and i am i have taken the uh, i have taken the assumption that there is imperfect production going on there this can't be in real life scenario that the your production system is perfect so to disposing the imperfect uh, imperfect items is more much more harmful for environment so we are salvaging them at a discounted price in the secondary market which is which is benefiting the manufacturer economically and not harming the environment also so these are my main conclusion which i presented thank you these are some differences anjali uh, have you got any suggestion Ji? for disposal of parali that is uh, burned in Ji? punjab and haryana uh, if you must from now uh, farmers would be burning a lot of parali have you got any suggestion uh, regarding reducing their uh, carbon footprint disposal of sorry parali parali sorry you are not audible क्या बोलते हैं राइस 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 
Okay, Monica, start. Monica, go ahead. Yes, sir. The screen is visible? Yes, yes. Good evening, sir. Topic is a systematic review and meta-analysis on the effect of McKenzie exercise on forward head posture. The aim of the study, the aim of this systematic review and meta-analysis is to find out the effect of McKenzie exercise on forward head posture. So this is methodology. Uh, um, thus, uh, this is according to Prisma guideline, and this review is registered under Prospero. This is the Prospero number. This is search strategy. Uh, data was searched from Google Scholar, Cochrane, PubMed, and Pedro. This is the flow diagram as per Prisma guideline. So, what so are the major insights? Uh, sir, a uh, uh, total of 95 studies were included. Out of 95, 9 studies were included in this uh, review. And out of 9, 6 studies were included for meta-analysis. Meta-analysis done uh, as outcome is a craniovertebral angle, neck disability index, and respiratory parameters. Result of these studies, total 95 studies were shortlisted, in which 9 studies were reviewed. And out of 9, 6 articles were for meta-analysis. According to, um, to our knowledge, this is the first research aimed to review and analyze the study in this field. There are several major strengths. First, it, uh, this is first review. And second, this is according to Prisma guideline. And third is this review is under um, register Prospero. And these four studies uh, match with my uh, result that conclusion of this study, improvement in craniovertebral angle, neck disability index, and also change in respiratory parameters, FBC and FEV1, in forward head posture by improvement with McKenzie exercises. Therefore, it is possible to indicate that McKenzie exercise should be recommended for the treatment of forward head posture. Thank you, Monica. Thank you so much, sir. Next speaker is Monica again, the Friday 164. One sixty four and yes. can be there. Monica, how many papers you are going to present? Uh, sir, I'm another Monica. This okay, this Monica, Monica is different from okay. okay. Monica should uh, previous one. Okay, okay, start now. Yes, sir. Uh, sir, I'm present. Um, show my uh, window. What's the title of your study? Yes, sir. Effects of classical training on strength in football players, a systematic review and meta-analysis. My aim of the study is a systematic review and meta-analysis is to utilize pool data from experimental study to determine the effects of classical training on strength in football players. Need of my study, training for this vast array of different qualities is both time uh, consuming and demanding on player coaches often seek advanced to training strategies that can improve performance in a range of athletic tasks without necessarily greatly increase training demands. One such method that can receive increasing research interest in recent e uh, years is training with casual training to the exercising muscle. This is the methodology, study design, systematic review, mental analysis. Uh, such strategies as Cochrane, PubMed, Google Scholar, and Pedro. Time duration uh, 2012 to 2023. <clears throat> Search Tamkatsu training strength hypertrophy BFRT football players. Inclusive so criteria. Uh, Monica, would you explain BFRT? What is uh, BFRT? Yes, sir. So, uh, BFRT is a, a recent uh, technique that 
uh, used in conjugation with low intensity resistance training uh, in which uh, a uh, occlusion uh, occlusion cuff is used uh, as a uh, blood pressure of the arteries of the uh, patients uh, and uh, measure the blood pressure of that artery and uh, uh, that used with the low intensity resistance training uh, so both are used uh, to improve the uh, to improve or enhance the uh, strength of the uh, players uh, according to the prisma table uh, reports identified from databases for made uh, 30 uh, 38 articles included for cran 6 okay. articles what are your major findings what are your major findings monica Yes, sir. Uh, according to uh, my study, uh, three outcome uh, measures uh, included jump height, uh, sprint 60 meters, and one RM uh, repetition of uh, strength exercises. Uh, from the meta analysis, six articles included which, uh, with outcome measures as one RM jump height, sprint. 60 meter to find out the effect of casu training on strength in football players primary outcome measures a jump height contribute the data uh, uh, standard median deviation 0.11 to 95% of uh, clearance uh, to heterogeneity from the studies from the three studies that contribute the data of secondary outcome measures as 60 meters and the standard uh, deviations a result of a tertiary outcome measures as one RM from three studies. On the meta analysis, with the strong heterogeneity, sensitive analysis was also carried out. Exclusion of one study from the meta analysis because no single outcome measures match with other outcome measures for analysis. Two studies also excluded because no standard deviation value is given in the article, only mean value are given. <coughs> okay, so Monica. Monica, yes, in the game of yes, football, position of India is not uh, so good. So what do you think? Yes, uh, sir. It, are the Indian players lacking strength or is it a matter of skill? What is your uh, sir, uh, sorry sir, can you please repeat? Uh, I am jokingly uh, asking that uh, India, yes, India is very much behind other countries uh, yes, in the sir. game of football. So yes, what sir. do Indian football players lack? Do, do, do they sir, like risk of injury because of risk of injuries increases because of strength coordination and balance and uh, uh, most of the training uh, is uh, um, training uh, lack of training. Uh, so different different uh, uh, training methods uh, are uh, um, nowadays uh, uh, different methods are used to train the athletes. Uh, so, uh, uh, because uh, uh, some uh, people are doing uh, only high intensity exercise, some doing low intensity exercise, not proper training doing uh, doing that. Uh, so, uh, some uh, more. Uh, Thank more you, Monica. Thank you. Are in, in the next. The sir, the next. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> next is Manu Goswami. Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. Uh, Is this visual, sir? Yeah. Hello? G, continue, continue, Mono. Hello? Hello? Uh, your voice is not clear, Manu. Okay, sir. Just a bit. Uh, start your presentation. Okay, okay, sir. The paper presents the study of metacognitive case of Haryana. It is uh, a need you, of the art that we should. Can you the please speak this paper on yes. your methodology? Yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, you start from objectives. Back to slides. Okay, sir. 
to study the levels of metacognitive skills of secondary school students to compare the metacognitive skills of government secondary school students with respect to gender and location sample a sample of 2 uh, 240 metric class students of district kathal of haryana state was selected randomly um, to use metacognitive skills scale developed by dr madhu gupta and suman 2017 data analysis and interpretations the percentage of metacognitive skills of 240 students in different level very high high above above average below average low and very low were calculated to analyze the data percentage statistics were used the obtained values from all 240 students are presented in table 1 this is the level very high number of students and percentage of students Uh, there is no significant difference in the metacognitive skills of government secondary school students with respect to gender hypothesis one this is my claim and second hypothesis is there is no significant difference in the students with respect to local the level of metacognitive skills and average टॉपिक ऑफ माई प्रेजेंटेशन इज टॉप बेस्ड फैक्ट एनालिटिक मॉडल फॉर द असेसमेंट ऑफ एग्रीकल्चर डेवलपमेंट इन द स्टेट ऑफ उत्तर प्रदेश इंडिया coming to the introduction part as we know that uttar pradesh is known for agriculture power house of india is a major food producer with two third of the workforce rely on agriculture activities for their livelihood with favorable agro climatic condition uttar pradesh is the largest producer of food grains with the wheat being the principal crop and sugarcane being the primary commercial crop other notable uh, exports include rice oil seeds lentils and potatoes even though the green revolution significantly improved the agriculture sector in uttar pradesh The disparities in agriculture development are the results of uneven disparity. Ritansi, can you please show your research work only? Skip this. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The uh, uh, topsis is the methodology which we have used. Topsis is a technique for order of preference by similarity to ideal solution, which is often known uh, as the classical multi uh, multiple attribute decision making method. Uh, with this method, we have uh, uh, quantified we have quantified the agriculture development of Uttar Pradesh at district level for two years, two thousand. 19 and 20 based on the current study uh, uh, a new factor analysis model that support the general principles of factor analysis and is based on topsis improvement which is relatively generalized dynamic factor analysis by satisfying all the assumption at once this model avoids the variational system of generalized dynamic factor and uh, analysis model then we also attempt to to attempt the use of uh, multivariate cluster analysis and then we have uh, tried to obtain the model district and potential target for various agriculture indicators 
these uh, the area of study we have uh, utilized the data from district wise development indicator uh, uttar pradesh 2019 and 2020 and a, a statistical abstract issued by economic and statistics division government of uttar pradesh these are 26 indicators which we have used in our study and uh, topsis based factor analysis uh, this analysis has been performed these are the steps in which we have calculated the standardized weighted scores and we have max, uh, also calculated the maximum and the minimum uh, zi uh, zi values then uh, at last uh, at the fourth step we had uh, calculated the composite indices of the development with this uh, given formula so coming to the uh, our output we have uh, uh, seen in that in western region these are the composite indices and for central region and bundelkhand region eastern region and uh, for uh, uh, and we have also employed the hierarchical and k mean cluster analysis uh, uh, for coming to the result of k mean uh, uh, analysis k mean cluster analysis uh, which which use the ward linkage method we uh, come to know that there are four uh, clusters which are formed uh, the first cluster have eight district which uh, uh, which are highly developed district in second we have 29 district which have a, a which are, which is a cluster of developed district and uh, the third and fourth has, has 23 and 15 respectively uh coming to the results and discussion uh, the most important uh, thing observed from the above table is that most of the district from the western region have been classified into highly developed and developed cluster thus the western region of uttar pradesh has been found to be fairly developed in terms of agriculture development while bundelkhand region of the state has been found in the most pathetic condition in agriculture development of the state here it is also observed that most of the district from eastern uttar pradesh have been classified into cluster 2 which is found to be the largest cluster and has been found in the second place in agriculture development after cluster 1 cluster 4 has been found to be poorly developed in the agriculture sector with the maximum uh, regional disparities and requires significant government effort to achieve a balanced regional uh, agriculture growth of uttar pradesh and we have uh, we have also tried to identify the model district for fixation of potential targets in this table i have shown um, the model district for less developed district uh, in less developed district jalau has the following model district which uh, jalau can follow to achieve the uh, uh, developed target and um, coming to some suggestions to achieve uniform agriculture development in uttar pradesh government policy government and policy maker should reduce regional differences which vatsala can you uh, stop your presentation vatsala so vatsala kosik please wait please wait because all the there is presentation nahi sir remove, remove the Sir, can I, uh, sir? Okay, please continue. Okay, so multi-vary clustering techniques can help identify clusters with high or low agriculture develop uh, development levels. Core district in highly developed cluster should support neighboring district synchronous growth. Sir, I have kindly concluded. Your okay. time is over. so uh, at last i would like to say that uh, as a result rather than looking at the entire district we need to pinpoint the tehsil and blocks with the lowest level of development. These are some references. Thank you. Okay, okay. Thank you, Tansi. Now, Vatsala, you are ready. Am I not audible to you? The next speaker is Ajay Kumar. कर दो सर इसको रिमूव कर दो पापा एम सी कर दो इसको अजय कुमार उपेंद्र मीणा यस सर ओके स्टार्ट योर प्रेजेंटेशन एंड कंप्लीट विद इन 2 मिनट्स ओनली रिजल्ट्स एंड डिस्कशन एंड देन कंक्लूजन यस सर जस्ट वेट सर फॉर 
the equation of for maximum likelihood estimation under the simple random sampling and, and next we find uh, derive the maximum li likelihood estimator for uh, r uh, under rank set sampling scheme this equation one and equation two are the normal equation for uh, rank uh, maximum likelihood estimation under rank set rank set sampling schemes after the applied numerical uh, numerical method we will, uh, uh, we will estimate the reliability estimation under rank set sampling uh, behavior of pdf the uh, generalized inverse probability distribution pdf is behaviorally we have positively skewed and hazard function we have is the ups and down side curve curve and uh, these are the findings and in the uh, in this paper we find that uh, uh, in srs uh, comparison between srs and rss we find that a mean square error for srs srs is always greater than in uh, always greater than rss uh, then we find uh, we conclude that uh, rss is more informative and more efficient uh, sampling scheme for small samples in comparison of simple random samplings and in this table the cycle uh, is 5 and if we increase the cycle value 10 then and the findings are the same and uh, rss is result is uh, more mean square error is always less than uh, in srs conclusion uh, in this history, the problem of estimation, the reliability system uh, R, P, X, Y less than X, then the stress Y and strength X, these are the independent variable from generalized inverse view distribution. And the maximum likelihood estimator of R is derived in both cases, SRS and SRS. In the simulation study, we use multi purpose simulation and, and, and conclude that we find the uh, uh, RSS sampling scheme is more efficient and informative sampling scheme in. In, in comparison of simple random sampling scheme. These are the references in taken in my study. Okay, thank you, Bhupendra. Next okay. speaker is Sotelal, Rotas and Pablo Jakhar. Their pride is 43. Who is going to present? Next speaker, Sotelal, Rotas and Pablo Jakhar. Their pride is 43. Next is Alka. Their pride is 123. Alka is not here. Then next is Professor Arti Ghod, Ali Mendi, and Nima. Nima and Ali Mendi, Nima, and Professor Arti Ghod. Ali, Ali Mendi, to hoga sir. Ah, Mendi Ali ora. Ah. Nee, this is uh, one zero five. Mm -hmm. Yes, I am Mehdi Ali, sir. Oh, Mehdi Ali, okay, okay, then start your presentation. 105 Mehdi Ali? Yes, sir. Or... Okay, okay. Then. Start, Mehdi. Okay, sir, I am, I am sharing my screen, sir. <laughs> Sir, my screen is visible, sir? Yes, yes. Okay, sir. So. Good evening, everyone. My topic is generalized family of ratio exponential log type estimators using information on two auxiliary variables. This is the introduction part and um, introduction in brief. And um, these are some review of literatures. These are my suggested class of estimators. This is the condition efficiency comparison. And uh, this is, uh, I tried to show uh, a brief numerical study of my experiment. And this is the conclusion. In this study, uh, I have proposed generalized family of ratio exponential log type estimators using information on two auxiliary variables, expression for the bias and the MSC of proposed general class of estimators are obtained up to the first order of approximation 
one data set I have used for numerical study. And um, I have observed that the proposed subclasses of general estimators are perform performing better as compared to their competing estimators. I have generated seven subclasses from the proposed general estimators using different combinations, which all are efficient in different situations as compared to simple random sampling. So the proposed general class of estimator is preferable in further study. Thank you. Okay, thank you. The next speaker is Vivekanand and Sangeeta. Paper ID is 120. Vivekananda Sangeeta. Present here. What's the speaker? Any speaker who they have not presented their paper, but still they are waiting. Good evening, sir. Myself, Anamika Shukla Sharma. I have submitted my paper uh, in, under supervision of Dr. H.S. Hota. And uh, I came to know that it was my uh, my ID was 195. 195, uh, I think uh, that will be, that is not included in this session. Yes, yes, sir. Uh, I talked to Dr. Richa Handa and... Uh, I missed a Google form, sir. I missed to fill a Google form. That may be the reason that my paper is not included in the schedule. Then uh, you need to discuss with Professor Hota. Uh, we have no solution about this. And uh, though I have submitted my registration fee also okay. and got the acceptance mail too. Okay, then you will discuss uh, either with the Dr. Arti Kaur tomorrow. Okay. Then we will include in the next session. There will be again a uh, next session at uh, what time? Uh, at 12.30. 12. 12. Online uh, session is there. Tomorrow 12.30. We will include, include in that session. Uh, sir, actually that will be a working time. Uh, but, if you uh, can consider my candidature in this session. Not at this time. Not at this time, please. Thank you. Okay, sir. Thank you so much. Uh, Vatsala? Vatsala? Yes, sir. You are ready? Uh, ready? Yes, sir. Ready for presentation. So please go ahead. Start. Sir, my screen is visible. Not visible. Yes, yes, it yes. Please go ahead. Technical advancement in healthcare sector. Okay. Yeah, CSR, uh, corporate social responsibility CSR is the uh, idea that a company should play a positive role in the community and uh, the environment and social impact of business decisions. So let's keep this on. CSR, uh, CSR is a. Uh, what, sir? Uh, skip this slide and uh, go directly on your research work. Okay, sir. Uh, my study yeah, yes. objective is. Uh, my study objective is uh, long term effect of uh, experimental uh, implementation of uh, uh, technical tools in healthcare sectors 
and secondly objective is uh, element influence the present anti corruption policy what and part uh, what part does information technology play in it Methodolo methodology is a personal interview uh, questionnaire and uh, 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 <coughs> uh, google forms uh, used and uh, data for create the idea that uh, actor refrain uh, from sharing adoption tools because of uh, people uh, public organization require embrace a logical approaches and uh, <clears throat> high risk corporation areas uh, mandated uh, mandated rotation of employees because of uh, and uh, because of corruption organization strategies and encompasses practical such as uh, collaboration role separation and mentorship among individuals working in corruption prone sectors the growing popularity of managing digital purchasing uh, platforms system and in engineering is uh, glaring absent from the list of process managers conclusion of this study is uh, e government health uh, system is uh, still limited and uh, anti corruption approaches highlight how the new accessibility approaches overcome the problems identified identified in the initial uh, periods and uh, have increased reports uh, after an effective exchange of information the variable highlight the uh, adoption of csr Uh, technological tools that prevent corruption such as you know, access to information in real time use of the internet to disseminate data and uh, results changing in supply chain process processes through digital platforms this is my references used in a research thank paper thank you thank you, thank you sir thank you any other participant who presentation is pending uh, yes sir my presentation is pending i am uh, dr sangeeta here dr sangeeta was last your voice is not clear uh, sir am i audible your volume uh, yes, yes 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 sir you may start madam okay sir uh, sir my screen is visible not visible संगीता योर स्लाइड इज नॉट विजिबल सर जस्ट वेट sir actually uh, i don't know what's the problem but uh, not able to uh, sir uh, my screen is visible yes 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 please go ahead Uh, good evening to all present here i am dr sangeeta and my topic for uh, uh, presentation is the social networking sites contribution in talent management and the study is based on the ncr so basically uh, this study is based on the social networking uh, contributions 
for the professional uh, which is hard on the social networking platforms so uh, how much social networking is contributing for the uh, professional that they can hire more and more uh, potential employees according to the work profile so whole study is based on so this is the little part of uh, uh, introduction and objective is basically uh, how the social networking sites contribution for the talent management for uh, um, uh, basically uh, at, uh, hr recruiter and the area is the ncr area in india so data were collected from the uh, different kind of area in the ncr and the total sampling size was 400 employees uh, among that 300 employees and the 100 employee were there and the, i use the likert scale for this so basically uh, this is the research methodology for this and uh, i took uh, this is the profile of respondent and uh, basically metro uh, city i am um, employees are used for the data collections and the finally this uh, these are the my data analysis if you talk about the finally finding so now this time after the corona uh, this is uh, it become the boom for every organizations so online pro, uh, online platforms become uh, easy uh, way to find the more potential employees for the uh, um, hr recruiters so they can uh, they can reach the huge geographically area so uh, before the corona the uh, use of the social networking uh, sites were not so much popular but after this pandemic situations company use more and more social networking as well as other platforms for recruiting their employees and this become very cheapest and the cost effective for the employees so whole these studies is based on that how um, social networking platforms contributing more cost effective time uh, effectives and other benefit to the hr recruiters so basically i use in this study the three platforms facebook linkedin and of course twitter is not so much uh, working uh, after the take over uh, other companies so basically linkedin is the most powerful tools or uh, social networking sites for the hr recruiters and the suggestions if you talk about the finally suggestions so suggestions from um, based on all data that uh, um, mostly jo uh, small uh, industries or small companies are not use so much frequently social networking sites so they are uh, then that's create the more problem to reach the a, a huge area for the geographically so it is the recommendations that they can use it as at the large area, large area so they they can uh, hire the potential employees according to their profile and according to their uh, require uh, requ uh, requirement for the positions so whole these are studies based on the social networking so this is my study sir thank thank you madam okay, thank you. Thank you. is there any participant you, uh, who want to present now any presentation still pending b or c me present now yes haider what's your query excuse me sir yes my name is haider abdul razak okay i'm from iraq okay yes i will uh, give presentation now what's your preparation haider Either what's your paper ID? Yes, one seventy two paper ID. One seventy two. One. Uh, maybe your presentation is tomorrow scheduled. Yes, I know, sir. I know, but can I introduce today? Oh, no, I, it's I not possible right now. Tomorrow. Not right now. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you, Heather. Any other participant? Okay, thank you all, and a special thanks to uh, the session chair of this evening, Professor uh, Dohanji, uh, and uh, all other participants. Thank you all, and now have a good night. Thank you. Thanks, thanks so much. Shalat al-Ghazb, but the day is almost over.